Good evening and welcome to Vicarage Road as Watford hosts Chelsea in the fourth round of the FA Youth Cup. Good night here for Chelsea and a chance to progress to the fifth round. The opportunity to take on Liverpool or Burnley away from home is the prize. But let's take a look now at how Chelsea made it through to this stage of the competition. It was a rather straightforward 4-1 win for them against Leighton Orient in round three. A game played in mid-December. Mothersill, a player who's been in outstanding form so far this season. He gave Chelsea the lead, and it wasn't too long after that they made it to Sunsuk Bell on hand at the front post. It was the first half in which Chelsea had so many chances. They really could have won this contest by much, much more. The goal of the game coming from Thomas. A wonderful fine finish as he cut in from his right back position. Leighton Orient, well, they play at a lower level than this Chelsea youth side, but they had some bright moments themselves and they had a goal to take away from the contest. But it was a goal that only really sparked Chelsea back into life in the second half. They managed to add one more goal to the scoreline so that they could breathe a little more comfortably towards the end of the game. The fourth coming after some fine play, which led to a ball into the box, which was headed home at the back post by the substitute, Abu. And they've ensured that Chelsea head through to the game tonight, where they will take on Watford for a place in the fifth round. Let's take a look at the way that Watford sealed their passage through to this game tonight. They had to come back from behind to beat Cardiff. Their winning goal came just with a minute left to play. The goal scored by Adrian Manning to make sure that Watford made it through to this game here this evening. So this is just one of many games still to play in the fourth round of the FA Youth Cup. Three matches have already been played, as you can see. Blackburn beating Stoke by three goals to nil. Bournemouth 2 nil winners at home to Queen's Park Rangers, whilst Blackpool a win on the road for them as they beat Cheltenham by three goals to one. As you can see, plenty of big names still in the competition. The likes of Newcastle, Manchester City and Liverpool. Tottenham also still to play in this fourth round. This a competition in which Chelsea have had so much success in recent years. Six times they've won this competition in the last ten years. And they sit second on the all-time list with nine trophies to their name. Just Manchester United on ten have won this competition more often than Chelsea. There will be a small crowd here this evening inside Vicarage Road. Playing conditions look pretty much perfect here tonight. And Chelsea continue what has been a fine run of form in the middle of October. They are unbeaten in their last eight games since they were beaten by two goals to one against West Ham on the 2nd of October. Goals have been a very plentiful supply for them in those games. They've scored 31 times in their last eight matches and you have to say, Sam, they will come into this game here tonight as the favourites. They will do. I mean, this is always the, the big one the tournament that the players in the academy look forward to trying to emulate what's gone before there'll still be players over at the, the first team training facility who have won this competition and i know in no uncertain terms given the history that this is the one to cement yourself as the best youth team in the in the country so this will be a tough game you know premier league opposition perfect pitch as it always is there'll be some nerves amongst the players but it's real quality in this group. We saw it in the last round against Leighton Orient, but expecting a much sterner test this evening. It's been three years since Chelsea won this competition, which seems like a lifetime, really, given the success that yeah. Chelsea have had in recent years. And they'll want to put that right as well, won't they? Because it's almost a small fraction of an age group which has gone through now without picking up major silverware. They had that disappointment, of course, losing to Manchester City in that delayed 2019-2020 final and also the huge disappointment last year when they lost late on against Everton. Yeah, I mean, that was a real sucker punch last season. You know, played pretty well over the piece. Looked like they were going to get themselves a, a goal late on, but Everton scored right at the death. It was um, tougher the Chelsea players to get over with, I'm sure, the goalkeeper in particular. And the previous year, it was uh, 
virtuoso performance from Mason Greenwood, to be honest. He was by far and away the best player on display for Manchester United on that occasion, and, and rightly, they secured their passage to the next phase. But, um, yeah, hopefully this year is going to be better. There's certainly some excellent players that we've seen in first-team action in recent weeks and, and looking forward to seeing those guys, how they adapt being back with the youth team this evening. Chelsea have so many options, don't they? They have such a deep academy. And we have to say that the team selected tonight is another strong one. It was extremely strong in that game against Leighton Orient. And good to see the likes of Jude Sunsup Bell, Harvey Vale, Charlie Webster and Malik Mothersill all involved tonight. Malik Mothersill has had an incredible season so far, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, in the previous round, it was Leo Castledine, Mother Seal and, and Soon Suk Bell were a, a front three, uh, if you like. Um, and I've not seen Soon Suk Bell and, and Malik Mother Seal play in tandem before. Mother Seal's obviously been plundering a great return of goals in the in the under 18. Soon Suk Bell has, has moved on to the 23s now. He's been a little bit of a slow starter this season, just lost his way in front of goal, but seen a couple of brilliant uh, recent finishes to get him back on song and looking forward to seeing those two tonight and Harvey Vale in the mix. Real good firepower, Harvey Vale in particular having had um, uh, a few you know, opportunities with the first team recently, we were feeling great about, about life and I'm sure wanting to show his contemporaries what he's all about. Now he's had a, a bit of experience with the first team guys. It's been a good few weeks hasn't it for Chelsea Academy graduates. We saw Lewis Hall make his senior debut in the FA Cup against Chesterfield at the weekend. And as I mentioned, Harvey Bale has been in and around the first team as well, featuring in that Carabao Cup semi-final first leg win against Tottenham Hotspur. Watford, well, they've got Adrian Manning and Shakai Ford, their two goal scorers against Cardiff in round three, both in their starting lineup tonight. And also Kyrie Lisby, one of the children of Kevin Lisby, the former Cholton striker, who I'm sure you, of course, remember perhaps most famously for that hat-trick which I'm told he talks about quite a lot, that he scored against Liverpool in the Premier League all those years ago. So we're all set to get underway here at Vicarage Road, a place in the fifth round of the FA Youth Cup at stake. The prize, Liverpool or Burnley away from home. For Chelsea, well, they have so much history in this competition that they have an expectation to go all the way. The players of both teams take the knee ahead of kickoff here to warm applause as well from all sides of this stadium. The message remains the same, there is no room for racism or discrimination in football or society. So Chelsea get us underway here this evening, looking to make a positive start. Lewis Hall sending it forwards immediately. And Lewis Hall, and he should be buzzing right now, shouldn't he Sam, given the few days that he has had. Yeah, I mean, what a debut. I think it, it's taken probably everyone a little bit by surprise, even within the academy, how quickly this has happened for Lewis Hall. But obviously, a few players down in the first team, Chilwell being the obvious one, left-sided. Uh, problems with various other players that can play that role. So he's put himself in a position, um, if anything was to happen to Alonso, where he'd be a shout, wouldn't he? Even though he played left centre-half, showing his adaptability again this evening, playing the centre of the park, which we understand is his preferred position. So. Really versatile customer, and you know, what does that say about the young man's mindset going into high pressure situation? Something that he would never have experienced anywhere near before that crowd. Um, huge away following from Chesterfield, vociferous crowd at Stamford Bridge, and one of the best players on display. So he must be feeling magnificent. And I don't think there's the problem, which there can be when you go back to under 23s football, under 18s football, to get yourself going. I think it'll have. Um, you know, broad shoulders tonight, be feeling really confident, wanting to show the lads that he trains with day in, day out, you know, what a vein of form he's in right now. I guess this gives him the opportunity to step down and not just show his teammates, who he, of course, also wants to see go on and do well themselves, but also show these Watford players, this is why I was playing for Chelsea's first team. Yeah, and you become a little bit of a marked man straight away. They're, they'll know in the dressing room when they see the team sheet that that's the lad who made his first team bow, and uh, they'll be wanting to get right amongst him and make him look ordinary tonight and that's that's always the motivation when you come up against um, perceived better players and um, I'm sure the Watford lads have had the motivation when they saw the team sheet come through lads that have been involved in Chelsea's first team well, motivation for Watford this evening as well their previous game was not a good one for them they were beaten 6-0 by Cholton at the weekend Watford find themselves currently in 8th position in the under 18 development league 
Has a lead that is split into two sections, Northern and Southern. Cholton are the league leaders in that division, but they would love to get that result, get that performance out of their system here tonight. It'll be a huge scalp for them if they could pull it off. They aren't expected really to take Chelsea out here tonight, but it is cup football and we saw it in the senior FA Cup at the weekend. Surprises can happen. We have, and you know, we've not even really spoken about uh, Watford tonight. Uh, this is a huge evening for these guys, playing against Chelsea, obviously have won a lot of uh, trophies, uh, taking this, this tournament obviously by storm. And um, big game, big game. Remember when it came around every year, when I was part of the setup at, at Chelsea, these are the games you look forward to to play on the first team pitch, and they'll be highly motivated. Watford. Strike comes in from distance, but it's a strike which is charged down, picked up by Webster. Now Vale rolls it right. Brody Hughes looks to send in the delivery, it's punched away by Marriott. And Chelsea looking to push ahead early on here. Here's Webster once more. He finds Billy G. Great occasion as well for these Watford players to play at Vicarage Road, to play on the pitch, playing the stadium where the first team playing. I'm sure that plenty of the coaching staff the role involved with the first team will be taking a look on tonight as well. There's a real shop window for these young players. As you said, such a big occasion, these FA Youth Cup nights. This is the competition that you want to win. Coach just cut out there as possession's picked up by Adi Yamo. Header away, no nonsense defending by Chelsea's captain, Alfie Gilchrist. Let's take another look here at this ball into the box. Just gives you a sign, doesn't it, Sam? Because we saw Chelsea go down the right-hand side a lot in their previous cup tie. We did, yeah. yeah Brody Hughes um, stepping on now. I mean, the, the starting positions of the two outside centre-halves has been very aggressive early part. Bradley Morgan stepped in a few moments ago, almost up to the edge of the the Watford box, so trying to compress the game as they would the first team, but Watford not had anything on their goal to this point, and just early sparring right now. This is Chelsea's first game since they beat Leighton Orient back on the 12th of December. They were due to play both Southampton and Aston Villa in the league, but neither of those games were able to take place. There so many of these players involved at various youth levels for Chelsea, some were involved in the EFL Trophy defeat against Arsenal a few days ago. There's a game in which both Gilchrist and Vale played 75 minutes in up belt, played just over an hour as well on the night, just not to beat Chelsea's evening. Fine win for Chelsea's development team at the weekend. 5 0 winners against Leicester in the Premier League, too. Referee just wants to have a brief word here. Tunnel. Still settling down, hooked forwards by Blake. Chelsea back in possession here. Here's Hughes once more. Another player who we've seen play in a variety of positions this season. Now Billy G. It's Alfie Gilchrist. His leadership has impressed plenty of people this season. Play forwards by Webster, loose touch by Hughes. Look to work it down this right hand side. Chelsea looking to maintain a highly impressive record in this competition. They've scored in their last 38 FA Youth Cup games. It is by some way a club record. They do not struggle to score goals either. They've won their last two games 4 1. They've scored 31 times in their last eight matches. It will be a tough task for this Watford team to keep them out here tonight. A good bit of movement there, Lewis Hall just coming short and then making the dart in beyond. Able to just stretch out his left leg. 
It's a deflection for a corner. So what can Chelsea conjure up from this set-piece situation? Delivery comes in, it's a deep delivery as well, and it's a good header away. G over on the far side, just allows the ball to run out of play. Throw into Chelsea. Tonight's team's just scrolling through at the bottom of your screen. Indian Manning was the hero for Watford in the previous round, his 89th minute winner as they came back from behind to beat Cardiff. Shakai Ford had put them back on level terms just four minutes after they'd fallen behind. Chelsea, plenty of familiar names for you. The captain, of course, Alfie Gilchrist, Charlie Webster, who's been playing so much football this season. Might be an early chance for Chelsea here, and it is a chance which is taken. Harvey Vale with the coolest of finishes, and it has taken Ed Brand's side just nine minutes here to take the lead. What a time Harvey Vale is having right now. Yeah, Andy Manning's been kind of picking up Harley Vale in the, the opening exchanges, just dropping in with the two centre-halves and Marshall in that area of the pitch and just gets drawn towards the ball a little bit there, possibly, and he gets in between the full-back and the centre-half, but Mothersill's pass, I mean, the weight of it is absolutely superb and Harvey Bell recognises that he's got to run round it, get it on his stronger foot and he has the time to do so and then just cushion it back in the direction that it's come from towards the far post. Very accomplished finish from a, a player. He's having a great season. Chelsea into the lead in no time at all. Just as we were saying, how dangerous they are going forwards. Goals are plenty for this Chelsea team. That's now 39 successive FA Youth Cup ties in which they've scored. We're trying to work out if that is an all-time record. No one was quite too sure, but I'd be amazed if any team has scored in 39 successive games in this competition. Chelsea, of course, such strength in the FA Youth Cup. And it's begun very well for them here. Can Watford fight their way back here? Perhaps um, for them it's just about maybe getting through the next five or ten minutes and not conceding again. Yeah, I mean, they were pretty compact to that point. I mean, only nine minutes in, but Chelsea haven't been able to, to breach their, their defence at all. there have been nothing on the goal, but that was a wonderful bit of play from Mothersill, showing his versatility as well, playing slightly deeper than I've seen him before tonight. Number 10 alongside Harvey Vale off the central striker. Lovely turn and a beautifully weighted pass. And they got the finish that he deserved. Chance here for Watford to get an almost instant reply from this free kick. Crowded scene around the penalty spot right now. A couple of options over this delivery. Just a warning from the referee that he's keeping a close eye. And the battle's taking place for space inside that penalty area. Free kick is hoisted towards the back post. It's a deep delivery, and it was an almost free header, really, for George Abbott. And you can see why he would have been so frustrated with that. Well, it's a good ball. It's clearly something they've, they've worked on. There's an overload on the far side, and Abbott, I don't know if he sees it slightly late, but that was half a chance. Should have probably directed that back towards the target. Able to test Prince Adagoke in the Chelsea goal. Oh, they're entertaining football when they're goal scoring, Sam. It is the Chelsea side which have shipped a few goals as well. I think it's fair to say that they conceded 15 goals in this unbeaten run of eight games, and that's something I'm sure that Ed Brands would have been talking to the players about and wanting to see an improvement. Yeah, of course, but um, it's different personnel more often than not. At this level, you're not playing with a settled, settled back three, settled back four. I think the individual performances, Gilchrist in particular, Brody Hughes obviously playing as a right-sided um, wing-back tonight. Those two, their level's been pretty high, I have to say, but yeah, it's, it's not the norm, really, that you go week to week with the same personnel because they're playing at a variety of different levels, as we've seen recently, Hall and Vale involved with the first team. Lewis Hall has played in five different age groups this season. Bit of a remarkable campaign for him. He's one of those players we 
as you mentioned you, just a moment ago, you were talking about Malik Mothersil and he's playing a bit deeper tonight. And we've seen Lewis Hall play in a variety of positions. It's, I find that interesting because you see at some academies, it's the same system and players play in the same position all the way through so that they can essentially just plug straight in if they're needed in the first team. Whereas Chelsea, we see Rhys James can play in a variety of positions. We've seen it with Callum Hudson-Odoi. Chelsea seem to do things a bit differently. But does that help the players' education? Of course it does, yeah. And even in the two games against Spurs, we've seen a completely new different shape for the for the first team. So, you know, it's not as straightforward as being a left wing back, and that's the position that I'm going to take if I ever make the, the step up to the first team. So you have to be adaptable. And I think Lewis Hall, first and foremost, is, is athletically superb. Can get up and down the pitch. Is powerful lends itself to playing in the wide position so he can step into the play, go beyond people, as we saw even at left centre-half. But you know, he's played a lot of football in the centre of the pitch where we're seeing him tonight. Here we go, going to the left. And he whips it in, and it had Murphy Marriott in a bit of trouble there. He was clutching a thin air, concerned where that cross may end up. Went back to the edge of the area, and it's just cleared away by Shaq, I thought. I mean, that's a cross, but Marriott's never getting there if that's inside the post. He's definitely trying to pick out a teammate in the middle, but that doesn't miss by too far at all. And they are able to recycle it on the far post. Chelsea continuing to create opportunities here. It's a real disappointment for Watford that defeat and the manner of it against Cholton at the weekend. It was their first game of the new year. They had gone into Christmas unbeaten in three games. A nice bit of momentum and at that point. They look to be trying to get themselves back on track here tonight. Chelsea did do a bit of business with Watford this week. They signed the 16-year-old Travis Akamea, who had been at Watford, a player that had been attracting a huge amount of interest from a variety of clubs. Chelsea sealing his signature as Webster brings it down in the middle of midfield. Chance to progress it for Blake. He looks to turn inside Lewis Hall. Now Manning. Chelsea working hard to win it back. Webster goes in with a firm challenge and one which is deemed unfair. Emmanuel Adiemo. He takes a bit of a risk there, you have to say, Charlie Webster. I don't think necessarily he has to go for that ball and definitely doesn't have to go in so aggressively. He's right to get a talking to. Andrews was left in a heap. I should just clarify that was a challenge on Ryan Andrews. Watford's number two and it lends them another set-piece opportunity here, Sam, and they put a very good ball into the box the last time they had one. Yeah, 15 minutes in, that was their best passage of play. Manning got himself a little bit of space in front of the back four, able to work it into the front players, kept hold of it. Drew a, a bit of a, a poor challenge, you have to say, from young Webster. Mm -hmm. Do Watford have up their sleeve here? Deep delivery last time. Will we see something similar? This time around. And he's whipped in, it's towards the front post this time, flicked on and tipped over the top by Prince Adagoke. Called into action there, the Chelsea goalkeeper. And it was a smart stop to put it over the bar. Brilliant action, it's a fantastic delivery. And Hall, I think it is with the header, does everything right, steers it goalwards, just thankfully for Adagoke, it's straight down his neck almost, able to react and push it over. But we've seen now, do not give free kicks away. Manning certainly possesses quality in this left foot. Two very good set pieces so far for the Hornets. Can they make it three from three hit from this corner? And it's a deep delivery. And the header again is a bit of a disappointing one. This time George Abbott meeting it, but he's proving to be a threat from those situations as well. They're difficult, those ones, when they hang in the air for so long to get the right purchase on it you're watching it and you're watching it and lose your bearings a little bit as well just couldn't get enough purchase on it to take it back towards his teammates Chelsea looking to break here with Harvey Vale he gets it back and 
It's the option to strike here. He's looking to bend it inside the far post. You could see the intention from a mile off. He just couldn't quite find the execution. He'd be disappointed with that because that's a great situation. Lovely play, the build-up. Enjoyed that from Sunsup Bell, trying to pirouette towards goal. Man tight to him. The ball broke lovely for Harvey Vale, and he's just using him as a shield. Abbott, I think it was. But uh, he did reasonably well, actually, having seen that back to the defender, because I don't think Harvey Vale probably had sight of the far post. Maybe a bit of disguise. Could have whipped that the near side. Looks that hard on this occasion. Good surface here for the players tonight as well, Sam. That'll help. Yeah, they, you know, they'll enjoy it and they won't take that for granted because some of the, the pitches that they play on from time to time, you know, if you're playing a non-league ground or, or maybe a training ground, won't be as pristine, but absolutely first class. They'll be delighted to be out there. Yeah, good reaction by Watford since falling behind and they're on the move again here. Good Chris there to cut out the cross from Lisby. Piece of play to win the free kick for Chelsea as well. We're seeing some good moments from both sides. Lewis Hall, the player brought down. Yeah, it was dangerous. Kyrie Lisby getting to the byline. He just couldn't wrap his right foot around it. Then Lewis Hall, wonderful individual play, driving forward. We just spoke about that, and I think that's just the, the confidence he's losing right now. Coursing through his veins. Would have been easy just to play that square, play it simple, but. Had the confidence to drive forward, get his team out of trouble and draw the foul. But there's been a couple of warning signs just after Remain switched on. I thought Gilchrist did well not to dive in subsequently when the Lisby uh, delivery was half cleared. I thought there was maybe a tackle coming from Gilchrist and that would have led to a penalty. It's been a good open game so far. Chelsea leading by a goal to nil. Harvey Vale after nine minutes. Created numerous chances since. And just for a good run a few moments ago by Kyrie Slisby, 18 years of age, his twin brother Kyrell, not involved this evening. He pushed forwards, laid off to Blake. Looking to drive Watford forwards here. Now he's just waiting for the support of Balogun. takes over not to forget there really for Blake who tried a bit of trickery which didn't quite come off now Webster good first touch looks to thread it out to the far side doesn't work out initially pushed forwards by Sunsup Bell the offside flag though does go up to just halt that Chelsea attack that was a shame good crossfield ball cut out just growing in confidence this was lovely from Harvey Vale to start that previous attack Webster couldn't pick out Obviously with the, the initial ball, but since up Bell lofted it forward for the, the forward, just flagged offside. I have to say, it's 20 minutes which have absolutely flown by here this evening. We've seen some good moments from both teams and Watford are giving Chelsea a really good game here. And you can take plenty of encouragement and plenty of hope from this opening part of the game as they look to work away level here. Dubry working hard for Chelsea out on the far side, but the cross is going to come in. It's turned behind for another Watford corner. So what can Tom Hart's team do from here? Don't forget they were trailing in the previous round by a goal to nil against Cardiff City and they fought their way through. So that will be the message from Tom Hard as well to remember that they had that fight back in them on that occasion. Can they stage something similar here perhaps? Crowded scene at the front post. Ball comes in and Adagoke gets two hands to it but it breaks on the edge of the area. The strike comes in from Balogun. Bit of a high boot there. Chelsea though allowed to progress and they're in a real chance here. Watford have left themselves so badly exposed. Soon up belt, the challenge comes in, could still be put in. Indeed it is. And Watford were their own worst enemies there. A catalogue of errors. Defensively, you have to say, all over the place, so early in the game. Why take such risk? 
with just 21 minutes played, but Chelsea have doubled their lead. Malik Mothersill applying the finishing touch, but Sam, try and explain this for us. Yeah, Adegoke did really well first and foremost. I thought Balogun could have taken it first time, opted to take a touch, and as you said, so many Watford players in advanced positions. I mean, really bold setup at this stage of the game. That would have been a foul. Balogun trying to make up for his, his half error, I would say. At the, uh, the other end, and Soon Tuck Bell will be bitterly disappointed. He hasn't got his goal here. Does well to get beyond the goalkeeper. He thinks he's scored. And quite a fortuitous deflection actually rolls perfectly for Mother Seal just to poke it over the line and get himself a goal. But yeah, very early for Watford to be so gung ho and, and so disjointed, you have to say. And of course, we are looking at, we're commentating on younger, inexperienced footballers here this evening but you would imagine that the instruction to have been that cavalier would have come from the coaching staff which is quite bizarre given how much of this game is still left to play yeah we, we don't know what the setup is sure from a from an attacking uh, corner as it was but I mean yeah, that that felt like a goal when a team's chasing the game late late on and so many players are sent up the pitch uh, but, you know, Chelsea had to work it Webster did well to compete for that 50-50 and when the ball broke forward, they were immediately in big trouble. So, yeah, I mean, the goalkeeper would have been risking a red card, would he, if he had come out and taken Soon Sun Bell out. So, from that point on, really, once Webster wins that challenge, plays it forward to a teammate, there's only going to really be one outcome. Something we've seen, isn't it? Brentford have drawn plenty of attention for the way that they do it with their senior side in the Premier League. They have everybody up towards the edge of the opposition area, but Watford just left themselves so badly exposed there. Malik Mothersilk playing a bit deeper tonight, but he was the furthest man forwards there, and his remarkable run of goals continues. 13 in 13 now at this level this season. He's having a fantastic time of it as this corner comes in towards the front post, and Chelsea were close to making it three. Alfie Gilchrist hitting his head on it. Chelsea look dangerous every time they go forwards. Yeah, it's a good head up. It's good movement. He starts on the goalkeeper, darts towards the, the front of the six-yard box. And you kind of know when that's in flight, I'm going to make contact with that. And the only surprise, really, is he doesn't find that far corner because it was a free header. You wonder the way in which that goal was conceded, how that will affect Watford. Now, that might just have knocked the stuffing out of them a bit because it was an entirely avoidable goal, really. Such high risk so early in a game, having done so well in terms of a response to falling behind to Harvey Vale's opener. So it'll be interesting to see the body language and the attitude of these Watford players. Can they summon themselves once again to have another go at Chelsea here and at least try and get themselves looking like they might be able to stage a comeback to half the deficit, but they've given possession away. Strong challenge comes in. Referee allows play to continue. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. A little bit surprised. Chelsea nicked it high in a good position. Looked like they were going to be in towards goal again. After took a risk going off his feet. I thought it was a bit of a lunge. Definitely got something on the ball, but it's not the challenge as we've already seen with Charlie Webster. Normally gets awarded now. Webster, who was looking to step up and apply some pressure there, but it was neatly stepped away from. Ball forward seeking at a Yemo, but it runs through to Adagoke. Chance being taken there by Badley Morgan. Chelsea, of course, plenty of players who are also confident in possession. Who, uh, Edwin Anderson featuring for Chelsea tonight. He's another player who's been having a fantastic season. A goal involvement in every start so far. Ten starts for him in this campaign. He laid on one of the goals against Leighton Orient in round three. Appreciated that. Watford shown some confidence on the ball. They've shown some nice moments in this game, haven't they, Sam? They're clearly a side that are pretty good with the ball at their feet, good in possession. Yeah, they've just been unable to work it into the forward players. I mean, Lisby's had a good couple of minutes raiding down the right-hand side. Everything looks to be going through Manning, the, 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 the number four, the holding midfield player. There's a kind of four-man midfield in front of him supporting the lone striker, but the two number eights, if you like, the two attacking midfielders, been unable to get on the ball in behind Chelsea. 
And that, that, this is kind of where it's broken down. Brought down by Adeyemo. Gilchrist has potted him out wide and manages to block the cross. And so could Dubry. Session back with Watford. Here is Manning. Chelsea win the ball back, but it breaks down again in that final third, something that was just indicating. And now Chelsea have the free kick for the challenge. And Webster, and there's a few unhappy Hornets with that decision. I'm not sure about that one. I'm surprised that Manning didn't let fly when he had possession a few moments ago. Worked it into one of the front men, but then yeah, it was a coming together, but it looked again like the Watford player maybe got a bit of the ball. The fifth round tie against Liverpool and Burnley at stake here this evening. It would be a heavyweight clash, wouldn't it, if Chelsea were to take on Liverpool in round five. Still plenty of work to do here this evening. It was a lovely ball forwards by Webster. Good starting position by Alfie Murray. Good goalkeeping. Yeah, that's terrific movement as well. Soon up Bell not showing any interest in coming to the ball or running to the channel, running directly towards goal. He feels he can get in and he makes the passers mind up for him. It's unfortunate, but it's good goalkeeping for Marriott to be alive to the situation. Threaded through by Brody Hughes, seeking Harvey Vale, but it was just cut out. Leo Castledine amongst the Chelsea substitutes here this evening as well. Four goals in his last six games. It again gives you an idea of the strength of the options available to Ed Brand. Made first time and it did look offside at the time as Harvey Vale made his move. have had so many remarkable moments over the last decade or so in this competition they're hoping to make some more in this year's tournament Watford looking to bring themselves closer to Chelsea here the cross is whipped in by Ford Adagoke seemed to have a good read of that he did he was, he was confident that he was going to miss just pulled his arm away plenty of pace on the delivery from, from Ford and that was just a Maybe a, a slight mistake from Lewis Hall, just a bit of overconfidence, you know, wrong area. And that's the type of thing I've been there, you know, when players that you're playing with come back to under 18 level that have had a taste of the first team. The coaches will pick up on that fast, you know, and quickly and, and make the point at half time if you take liberties. And that was his, probably his first mistake, you know, half hour in. Plenty of players forwards here as Lisby tries to find some space. Nice touches from him, but the best that he can do is win. Watford the throw. The juice of the body, the ball rolled back. It was the ball seeking Manning, but it was a ball which didn't quite work out. And now Chelsea with the opportunity to strike on a counter hit. Plenty of space for Brody Hughes, but Mothersill still in possession. He touches it left, doesn't quite work out for Chelsea. That was an opportunity missed there. Well, he drove forward brilliantly. I mean, such an elegant mover, but the, the pass had to go to Hughes' right side. He almost got away with it because he turned into trouble, and then the pass to his left was an easy set, but just didn't get enough contact on the pass. But he's had a good half, and... It was a great sight seeing him striding forward there, leaving Watford players in his wake. Webster wins the battle in midfield. Now Billy G with Webster. Gilchrist. Hall. To switch play. Well, Hughes was the target and he might get on the end here. It's a costly slip. It could be three. It should have been three. It's a huge let off for Watford and Hamzat Balogun. 
Chelsea perhaps should have been way out of sight there, but the opportunity not taken by Brody Hughes. Yeah, just dawdles a little bit on the ball, Balogun, he slips actually in the end. And Hughes goes for the spectacular, really, in truth. There's another touch in this. He can steady that and take it onto his, his right foot where he could side foot it home. Looks to bend it expertly with the outside of the right, but gets it horribly wrong. Perhaps something that a player more accustomed to being in that part of the pitch, he would have taken that extra touch, but opportunity passed up by Chelsea, but they still lead here tonight by two goals to nil. Could have been ahead by more, but also not forget that Watford have had some chances here tonight as well. G. Badly Morgan. He looks to go long. The target. Sork at Dubri. Cleared by Marion. A chance to turn for Adiemo. He's to make his move into the middle. There's a chance here for Watford and a cocky with a fine save and a brilliant reaction as well to pounce upon that loose ball. It's another Watford opportunity, but a great save from the Chelsea keeper. And the MO with lovely hold-up play. What a pass that is from Lisby and the take from Greaves. Would have been some goal, but Adekoke, for the second time in this half, pulls, up a, pulls off a great stop. Stays big. You know, if he goes down early there, that whistles past him into the net. So, fantastic play from Watford. Really... Inventive forward play and a great stop from Adegoke. The challenge goes in by Balogun. Cross though is whipped in deep delivery and it's so nearly that third for Chelsea. Onto the roof of the net. It's another chance. Great forwards, but they look like scoring every time they go forwards, Sam. Yeah, I mean, they've been such a danger down the right-hand side. I mean, Sukot, Silcott Dubri hasn't done much wrong, but he, he's hardly had the ball. They've really... Given Balogun a tough first period. Doesn't get much better than that from Sunsup Bell to wrap his right foot around it, draw the goalkeeper out as it does. Mother Seal, he won't believe his luck. He thinks he's scored, just can't get over it. Should get over it. Should be celebrating a brace. Well, he's working hard to win possession back for Chelsea. He looks like a brilliant athlete tonight, Mother Seal. You know, probably playing with a game in front of him a little bit more. Been able to get it on the half turn again here. Get spun, run at people as opposed to playing with his back to goal. Well, works it to Hughes. Hughes lofts it up. Little miscue there as that cross was sent in. But again, we talk about, don't we? It's again seeing Mother Sill in a different position. It's all part of the education, it's all part of the learning. And I guess it brings, he might end up as a centre forward, but it brings his all round game on if he's going to play a little bit deeper from time to time. Yeah, I mean, in previous fixtures, he looked like an out and out centre forward, a, a, an 18 yard box player. Tonight, he's looking like a brilliant number 10 or, you know, a wide forward, someone who can go beyond people, really in, in, inventive with his passing and got himself a goal as well. So, yeah, a little bit surprised. I was uh, looking to see how they were going to line up, see if he was going to be alongside soon, Sup Bell, but. His position suits him down to the ground. He's been excellent. Did you ever get a run in midfield, or were you just happy to stick your arm up and go sling it long to me? Jim McGilton played me as a number 10. It lasted 45 minutes. <laughs> a sparkling <laughs> 45 minutes, though, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> the, the length of time tells the story. It wasn't, wasn't his best idea. Free kick here to Chelsea. Just under nine minutes to go until half-time. By three goals to nil at half time against Lut uh, against Leighton Orient in round three. Looking to reach a similar score line here. Oh, Petchum kick away there by Adrian Blake. Chelsea conjure up from this set piece. Oh, 
Webster that has walked away. Certainly a passing option here into Charlie Webster, but it's going to be whipped in instead, but far too much put on it. And a wasted chance there for Chelsea. Shame. Just misjudged it. Tried to put an enormous amount of pace and whip on it. Overcooked. Interesting half time. That Watford coaching staff can we work a way to get their side back into this game? Chelsea could be out of sight, really. But they're not right now. The lead is two goals to nil. Here's Harvey Vale. And now Webster. Very tight inside that penalty area. Watford with so many players back there protecting their goal and protect it they do. And now perhaps an opportunity for them to strike on the counter. Here's Lisby. Still Lisby. Under pressure, good work, hard work by both G and Hughes there. And now with the game stretched, it's Chelsea who are looking to attack. Mother still carrying the ball so gracefully once more. Can he find a delivery? They have to settle for a corner. Good passage of play from both sides there. Yeah, an example of, of Chelsea... And, and thinking, you know, what if, not taking liberties there. G engaged Lisby very aggressively, but Gilchrist was about 10 yards deeper than him. So, structurally, Lisby was going to have to produce something absolutely magnificent. He was kind of by himself to get through and, and get a sight of Adagoki's goal. So, good setup, even though 2-0, pretty comfortable. Still worried about you know, making sure they get to half-time with a clean sheet. Going to work short by Webster. In by Vale. Now Gilchrist. Looks to roll it across the edge of the area. Watford just about managed to get rid of the danger, but it's poor touch by Adiemo. Guys that would probably normally be ball boys are out on the pitch as well, so it's going to take a while perhaps for us to get this game back underway. Here is Freddie Hughes waiting to take this Chelsea throw. Time to turn for Ford. He lays it off to Addy and Manning. to go until half time very enjoyable very watchable first half here at Vicarage Road good work by Adeyemo there just to make life difficult for Adley Morgan who was challenged perhaps a touch late but just allowing Chelsea to develop their move here. There's G, able to stride forwards and he flights it out to the far side and he drops it brilliantly towards the path of Silver Dudley, but it's a good challenge as well. That's been really good, G. He's been, he's been aggressive and when he's had the ball, he's moved it sharply and that was another facet to his play. Lovely searching, crossfield ball, very nearly picking up. Silver Dudley on the far side. Silk. Doesn't quite work out for him this time, and I haven't said that too many times in the first half. Aston Villa, the reigning holders in this competition, a 2 1 win over Liverpool in last year's final. And Chelsea have appeared in eight of the last 11 finals in this competition. It's a remarkable run. But it is three years. Without winning this competition, Rhys James hosting the trophy high back in 2018. Oh, 
Edwards by Webster. The one by Sun Sup Belt. Not once but twice. Running though onto the loose ball for Watford. Ball pushed down the line. Just runs out of room on that far side Greaves. There's probably been more variety in this first half performance from Chelsea in, in terms of little short passes, trying to get the wing backs in, but also going long into the channels. Got three players up there and not seen them do it with this regularity, maybe in the previous game against Leighton Orient, certainly not in, in previous league games. So there's been lovely variety to the play, and invariably they've been able to get hold of it up the pitch as well. Been encouraged to. Get the ball back in play a little quicker there. We'll work back to Nagoke. Goalkeeper in shirt sleeves. You don't see that often enough. It's a bad mistake, though. And Watford are right back into this game. And it is Emmanuel Adeyemo. And it is a moment to forget. A really bad moment for Prince Adagoke, which just opens the door back into this cup tight for Watford. Well, he's had a brilliant first half. He's made two outstanding saves, but... I mean, to this point, they've really moved it sharply. They haven't really given Watford an opportunity if they've been seeking to press them. Loses his foot in a little bit. Not a moment he's going to want to see again, but credit to the centre forward. Adeyemo closes him, puts him under pressure, earns his goal. But a oh, bad individual mistake from a goalkeeper who had a great half. So his right foot just gave way a little there. It looks perhaps a slippy surface as well, doesn't it? But it's a moment to forget. And it's a moment which gives Watford hope here just before half-time. They'll feel perhaps that they deserve to be this close to Chelsea. They've had their chances in this game. They've drawn a couple of good saves from Prince Adagoke. And they won't really now want the half-time whistle to come. Uh, they'll be bitterly disappointed on the Chelsea bench. They've been in control. Um, you get in at 2-0. They'll probably feel that there's only going to be one winner. But, but now Watford are right back in it. Right back in it, they need to defend better than they have in this first half, but they've showed that they've got some tricky forward players. I think Lisby's come into the game and done well. Diemo's now got his goal, he'll be feeling better about things. It's been a bit of a, a tough um, furrow, he's had to forge up the front, but he be delighted to be on the score sheet in this game. Good hunger by Webster there to get himself on the ball. He went out to the far side and there is plenty of space to run into here for Silcott Dubry. Chelsea wanting to re-establish their two-goal lead here before half-time. A minimum of one minute to be added on at the end of this first half. Here's G. Now Vale, who put Chelsea ahead after nine minutes here. Look to work the give-and-go. Brought down by Webster again, who's just made some nice touches at the base of that Chelsea midfield this evening. Challenge comes in, picked up by Manning. He loses his footing. Good piece of play a couple of moments ago by Shakai Ford. Watford do have a player down right now. Play being allowed to continue as we tick down towards half time. 20 seconds left on the clock, but now the referee feels the need to pause proceedings here. You can see the boost giving them straight away there. I think it was Ford on the ball, driving forward. Not really seen him and Greaves. Dictate play from the middle of the pitch. Greaves got in for that one shooting opportunity, but Ford confident enough now that they've got a bit of momentum, drive forward, going beyond challenges. I think Hall was just about able to get back into a defensive position to thwart his, his attempts to get forward and join in with the centre forward, but yeah, the dynamic of the game just flips as soon as that goal's been scored. Yeah, this game far from over. Players towards the dugouts to take on some instruction. They'll have 15 minutes of instruction to come at the moment. Concerns here for Watford, Kyrie Slisby. Limping off it. He does have 15 minutes perhaps to see if he can shake off the problem that he currently has. Wanting to get proceedings back underway on the halfway line. Just a few seconds left of this first half, the first half in which Harvey Vale put Chelsea into the lead. Okay, that was doubled by Malik Mothersill, but Watford 
been allowed to work their way back into this game. That mistake a few moments ago from Prince Adagoke. Still waiting for the players to get themselves back into shape here so we can play the final few seconds of this first half. And there's the half-time whistle. Well, an interesting, engaging, entertaining first 45 minutes here at Vicarage Road. Chelsea into the lead through Harvey Vale. What a time he is having right now. His goal putting them ahead after nine minutes and a Chelsea breakaway from some very questionable Watford defending from their own corner. Malik Mavasil's goal coming after 22 minutes. Chelsea had chances to increase their lead, but then Prince Adagoke just before half-time, having had a good first half in the Chelsea goal, a slip by him allowed Emmanuel Adameo to tap in for Watford to half the deficit. Half-time here at Vicarage Road. It is Watford 1, Chelsea 2. So let's take a look back at the moments that mattered in that first half. It was, as I said, an incident-packed first 45 minutes. A very watchable contest. And Harvey Vell here, Sam, with a wonderful first-time finish to put Chelsea into the lead. The build-up. It gets better every time you see it. Mother Seal's awareness to get turned straight away and the weight of the pass is absolutely perfect. It enables Harvey Vale to be able to steer it home first time with that strong left foot. Lovely goal and, and probably showcasing what we've been saying about Mother Seal throughout that opening half. Um, he's been very, very good. But we saw from Watford a real ability to test Chelsea out from set-piece situations and this drew a good save from Adagoke. Well, Manning's been good, actually. Nice left foot, whipped into a dangerous area. Hall makes that his, and I thought it was going to be a great half for Adeg, OK, but unfortunately couldn't maintain that form. Harvey Vell with Chelsea's next opportunity. Just opened up for him on the edge of the area, and you could see what he wanted to do. He just couldn't bring that ball back inside the far post. Watford continued to test Chelsea out from set-piece situations, but then all of a sudden there was this moment which left us scratching our heads a little, Sam. Chelsea broke and made it 2-0, but so many questions over the Watford defending. Yeah, I think in retrospect, Balogun may wish he took that first time. Andrews goes to the ball initially with Webster, maybe could have dropped off. It's a little bit of a comical way for it to end up in the Watford net. This is good from Webster, nice and aggressive. He sees the pass, actually. Plays it nicely weighted into the path of Suntuck Bell. That would have been a free kick, surely. It feels beautifully, doesn't it, for Mother Seal. Scored one, made one. He's kind of been the difference in that first half. Been really impressed with him. He's had a very good first half, hasn't he? Now 13 goals in 13 games this season. Balogun mightily fortunate here to not be punished for that mistake. Chelsea really could have made it three through Brody Hughes. Yeah, and three at that point probably would have been the end of the night, in truth. So that on reflection is a huge moment for Hughes. Just tried to be a little bit... Uh, he tried to overcomplicate it, didn't he? Going with the outside of the right foot. Another touch to take it onto the side foot. I'm sure he would have been able to finish more comfortably. Chelsea have looked dangerous on so many occasions going forward, but so too have Watford, and Adagoke again was called into action there. A good stop from Jack Greaves. Yeah, Watford's best move. I thought that was a really clever ball from, from Lisby. Didn't have a lot of space to hit. And then the save from Adagoke I thought was excellent. Staying big not uh, committing himself to go to ground and Greaves just couldn't get it over him. So at this point Chelsea cruising at two goals to nil and they were looking to add a third. Good work again by Soon Bell and you were really impressed with this ball into the box out. Well he had a look, he surveyed the, his options and he knew that Mother Seal was just pulling on the back of the goalkeeper. It's really good persistence down the right hand side, Balogun gets a foot in but there you go, has a little look, sees his forward partner it should really be a goal, even though you know, he's stretching for it, but I think he can put that on the target. So Chelsea going close to extending their lead to a three-goal advantage, but then all of a sudden, just a few minutes before half-time, this moment to forget for Prince Adagoke, taken by Emmanuel Adeyemo Watford right back into this game now. Yeah, the, the seed of doubt comes from Blake's position. If you, if you watch it again, he's just closing G down. He wants to play it to his right-hand side, to Billy G, and he's just a little bit reluctant to do so. And that's what causes him losing his footing. So Chelsea leading by two goals to one here at half time. And a
Stamford Bridge for 45 last night. You wouldn't have believed that it was a cup semi-final. Um, there was too much quality in that Chelsea team. The only disappointing element, I suppose, is that there wasn't a few more chances on Gallini's goal in the first half and that they made a few mistakes in the second period. So a goal for Tottenham may have given it a different complexion and, and maybe would have provided us with a grandstand finish when, when really the game should have been long over probably after the first leg. So, yeah, I mean, the standards that Thomas Tuchel sets. Displeased, really, with probably the... The amount of individual mistakes last night once it went to 3-0, which could have let Tottenham back in. But brilliant to be at another final and just knows how to win those semi-finals, doesn't he? 100% record. It is just two years since 2005 and Chelsea haven't reached a cup final. I mean, that is absolutely astonishing. Yeah. That level of success, I yeah. guess, if you like, reaching finals on such a consistent basis. Well, you've got a top-level manager, that, that's clear. Um, you know, especially the, the, the two games against Spurs where people were, I don't know, not questioning him, but the 3-4-3, the 3-5-2, was there going to be a variation at any stage? Well, he's shown, uh, you know, in those last two games that he can adapt the system, that he can coach the players for them to get it bang on straight off. There's no doubt he's an elite manager, clearly one of the best in the business. And I felt last night with the likes of Rudiger and Azpilicueta and Jorginho, the ones that have been here five, six even longer in Azpilicueta's sense. They know that shape, um, they're coached really well, but they know that that big occasion as well. And I felt that was the difference. I think if you took maybe Kovacic and Jorginho out of that side last night, it may have been a different outcome. But the control that those guys have in those situations, I thought was really obvious in the first half to me. That was a big difference. Jorginho and Kovacic, so comfortable and popping it into the pockets of space for the more advanced players. It was beautiful to watch the first half, and I think it can get like that. Complacency can can sometimes just creep in in the second half because you're in such control. So I understood Tottenham rallying. You know, they're going to rally when they've got the likes of Harry Kane. They're not going to go through two 90-minute games without creating any chances. And I know uh, Malang Sarr, impressive performing. You, you liked what you saw from him as well. Yeah, I mean, he's done very well. I think probably exceeded some expectations considering, you know, how many players were probably in front of him in the pecking order. But I thought a left-back really confident without the ball uh, aggressive decisive but on it as well seems to be growing from every performance so he's given the manager a good option you know moving forward I'd still be surprised if he if he got the nod for the game at the Etihad but he's done his chances of featuring you know frequently throughout the rest of the campaign no harm at all it's a huge game coming up for Chelsea in the Premier League Saturday lunchtime against Manchester City so the options for Chelsea in that final Liverpool or Arsenal what would the preference be do you think Oh, uh, you'd have to say Arsenal, but I, I would imagine. You know, Liverpool are gonna, and Chelsea are going to finish much closer, you would suggest, than the North London side. But they've got big threats, haven't they, Arsenal? You know, this season, we saw it last season. Um, you know, Arsenal at the Emirates have been problematic for Chelsea. Saka and, and Smith Road is a youthful vibrancy going through that side right now. Arteta seems to be getting a tune out of them more often than not. So, in a one-off game, of course, it was the FA Cup final, wasn't it? Not too long ago as well, where Aubameyang um, put in the top performance up against Chelsea. So be wary of both of them, but put them on the spot, I'd definitely take the Gunners. I think the majority of Chelsea supporters would also prefer to go up against Arsenal in that Carabao Cup final. And it's possibly also worth, worth mentioning as well that the Chelsea manager Antonio Conte doesn't seem too happy right now with his time at Tottenham and perhaps the squad that he's working with. It will be very interesting to see how that one unfolds. Let's turn our attentions back to this evening and this fourth round in the FA Youth Cup. Chelsea looking to get themselves through to take on perhaps Liverpool or Burnley away from home in the fifth round. Let's take another quick look at the goals from that first half. Lovely first time finish there, Sam, from Harvey Vale. Yeah, well, there's, there's one thing seeing that pass, but executing it, it was in between Balogun and I think Manning was the, the midfield player, just dipping into um, the, the position in front of the uh, defensive line. And it was a wonderful port, port pass and a lovely finish from Harvey Vale. This was a bit of a mess in, in truth. I think Chelsea would have got a free kick in a very dangerous area, but better than that, that ball deflected into the path of Mothersill, who deservedly gets his goal as well. But a bit of a mess defensively from Watford, who, in the main, shape hasn't been too bad. 
very much a game really that could just be 1-0 to Chelsea because there's been a bad mistake at either end and that's one that Prince Adagoke won't want to see too many times again. Yeah, again, the position of Adrian Blake just putting a bit of pressure on Billy Jean. That put the seed of doubt in the goalkeeper's mind and that's what forced the mistake, but he'll want to put that behind him in the second period. Chelsea players back out on the pitch here at Vicarage Road ahead of the second half. Manic Mother Silk. I think we need to talk about him, don't we, Sam? He had a very good first 45 minutes. We were we were keen to praise him, and rightly so. Yeah, there's something lovely about a big rangy player striding into space, taking people on, um, and this position has enabled him to do so. His awareness has been good when he's received the ball, when he can turn, and when he has to pop it off, and when he's been able to drive into into space. It's been a it's been a beautiful sight, and and that pass uh, again probably the moment of the match so far. The finish was lovely from, from Harvey Vale once he gets in, but the weight of the ball from, from Mothersill was a delight. So he can be really pleased with his um, first 45 minutes, but he's got to do it again now because the game, all of a sudden, somehow is on the knife edge. Watford certainly right in this contest and they had some good moments in that first 45 as well. Who caught your eye out of those Watford players? I know you were impressed with what you saw from Aidan Manning. Yeah, I just think getting on the ball, confidence to get on the ball, set-piece delivery, he's playing quite an interesting role, certainly the deepest of the midfielder, so a bit of a quarterback position, everything going through him. And Lisby maybe, as the half wore on, started to show a bit of a threat down the right-hand side, but, you know, in truth, I think Chelsea had enough good play in the final third to have scored probably definitely one, but maybe two more goals and, and have given this game one all, already, so... I would, I would suggest that Ed Brown wouldn't have been best pleased in there, not just because of the individual mistake from Adagoki, because that can happen, but maybe just because we weren't as clinical as they maybe should have been. And that's, that can often be a criticism of these Chelsea you know, academy sides. So many chances are carved out, but not always racking up the goals, and that's got to be the challenge in the second half. Good to see that Kyrie Slisby is back out for the start of this second half, but it might not be so good for Chelsea here as he looked to get on the end of that ball forwards. Adagoke called into action. A scare for Chelsea there very early on in the second half. Yeah, that was very brave and he did it excellently to come out there because the pass was lovely, the movement was very good. Lisby looks favourite. It just got away from him, didn't it? It looked like Lisby was maybe going to head that beyond the goalkeeper. Then he gets his tap in. Just ran away from him and he had to dangle the right leg. But Adagoke really brave and he'll be delighted. And that will help him forget that moment in the first half, which is something that goalkeepers have to do, isn't it? When they make a mistake, you have to flush that out of the system, get on with what's in front of you. And that was assertive goalkeeping by Adagoke. <laughs> Chelsea with plenty of options on the bench here this evening. Their full bench tonight, Ted Kerr, the goalkeeper, and then Derek Abu, Leo Castledine, Richard Elise, Sam Reich, Saki, Tudor, Mendel, Idowu, and Louis Flower. Plenty of options on the bench, and there's also plenty of players that aren't even involved here tonight for Ed Brandt. So much said, of course, of the strength of the Chelsea Academy, and recently the 50th player to graduate from the Academy to the first team since Roman Abramovich took over. Quite an impressive statistic, that isn't it, in just over 16 years to have so many players make a first team debut. It will be eventually Manning to get this game back underway. Okay, you can hear his call there. Good claim by the keeper. Clip forwards to Sweetcott Dubry. Now soon up Bell. Best of touches, but it was one with, with which he got away with. Clips it up to the edge of the area, seeking to find Lewis Hall. Good work by Brody Hughes. A bit tight over on that far side, and Chelsea come out of it with a corner. A bit messy, wasn't it? Soon up Bell. The ball get away from him down on the near side. His ball, I thought, should have been helped on by Lewis Hall for Brody Hughes, who was just about 10 yards to his right in a better position. We didn't recognise that, but he's able to win the corner. Oh, 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 
Rehearsed routine here, perhaps as Harvey Vale has a go. And it's a good save by Alfie Marriott. Chelsea so close to re-establishing their two-goal lead. Well, it's brilliant inventive play from Chelsea, but that can't happen. Harvey Vale shouldn't be allowed that amount of space to be able to take it onto his strong side. That's always going to hit the target. It's got too much quality for it to not. Marriott does excellently spring into his right. Great stop. Webster from this near side, he clips it in. And he retrieved by G. Can he dig out across here? It takes a deflection on its way through, and Manning is able to just sweep things up for Watford. He looks to go long up to halfway. No one really there for them. And so we've got Dubry with a lovely touch to bring it down and the confidence to carry as well. Is it overconfidence perhaps? He's still got it here. He is challenged. Gilchrist for Chelsea, captain of the side this evening. Wasn't too far away from making it 3-0 in the first half as well. That header from a corner, drifted just wide. He finds Webster. Andy Morgan, who you may well have noticed, doesn't have a number on the back of his shirt this evening. He is supposed to be wearing the number five. And by Marriott. Once more from Webster. Lovely turn, really lovely turn there by Lewis Hall. Just drew the challenge in and turned away. Now G again looking to carry Chelsea forwards. Again, in these situations now, when Adegoke is opting to roll it out to the to the centre halves. Ordinarily, the, the, the outside ones. Well, forget a little bit of a squeeze on, but I think that just enables Harvey Vale and Mothersill, those two, to be in a bit of space where the centre halves can just get their heads up and just clip it over that Watford midfield four. And then here we go, you've got Manning up against two players. That, that shows you there, it's a difficult job for the holding midfield player. And I think that's why Chelsea are getting success being a bit more direct than normal. Constructed Chelsea move there, just broke down on the edge of the area. Does that, does that mean that the, one of the fullbacks has got to come in and do a job on one of the number 10s and then the space in the wide area? So I think Watford are just caught in two minds a little bit. If you're going to go and press, then the whole team needs to step up. But they seem to be a little bit disjointed. Front five are shuffling forward, but then the back five are just too deep. And that's the space where Mothersill and Harvey Vale have caused the problem and made the difference in the first half. And it'll keep happening. Here we go again. It's gone a little bit further forward, but that is the pass all the time. And Mother Seal, Harvey Vell, both you know, good size, um, physical, athletic. They can get hold of the ball, and as soon as they, they do so, Watford, Watford are in trouble because Chelsea got players up the pitch. You see the lineups for the game this evening, just running through the bottom of your screen. Strong Chelsea team here tonight, captain by Alfie Gilchrist. Up to the edge of the area here for Watford. Lovely turn by Shakai Ford, who scored for them in the previous round against Cardiff City. Just see those options off the bench for Ed Brand now as well, running through the bottom of your screen. This is a close game here tonight. Perhaps it's one that shouldn't have been, but that mistake just before half-time from Adagoke has just allowed Watford back into this game and reignited their hope here. Perhaps a chance to turn there, but it was a chance which wasn't taken. The challenge comes in from Mother Sill. Ford again, who's having a few touches in the last few moments. That breaks very kindly indeed for Soon Sup Bale, who has Harvey Vale up with him. Still Harvey Vale, but the interception comes from Will Hall. Soon up belt. What can he work from here? It's all a bit tight over on that far side, and he's got two for company as well in Balogun and Blake. And 
Hawkins Hall. Always got his head up. He's always seeking out his options. He just plays it to Silcott Dugri this time. Uh, not sorry, to Badley Morgan. Now Webster, who's got plenty of space in the middle of midfield, and he knew exactly what he wanted to do there. Drops it into the path of Brody Hughes. Chelsea with five inside the penalty area here. Badly Morgan. Now Hall. Just breaks down for Chelsea on the edge of the area. Really good work by a Adia Manning, who continues to impress here, doesn't he, Sam? Yeah, he's been good. That was lovely, close control, getting away from a couple of Chelsea players. And this looks like a much more confident Watford. It wasn't going into the front players and they weren't able to get hold of it in the first half. I think that's just what a goal gives you. It's not so much paying Chelsea too much respect. There may be a part that's probably just nerves in the first half. And they've had a second life, really, in this game and they're looking to make the most of it here. Ford has his effort blocked. It breaks on the edge of the area for Jack Greaves. Opportunity perhaps here to cross for Balogun. He's going to work it short instead. Watford have players stacked up inside the penalty area here and it just breaks down. There was an opportunity to get the ball into the box there, but now it's Webster for Chelsea. Can they spring out here? Mothersill's making one of those runs forward and he is the intended target hit. Of course, touch just forces him a little wide. It's still Mothersill who's going to have a go. Sees his effort blocked. It's a shame, isn't it? Because if he takes that back inside the defender, he's got a big problem. Opens up the target. First touch let him down. I think once that happens and the support arrives, just got to bring someone else into play and Chelsea still would have been in business. Game's going to be paused here. And down for Watford is Ryan Andrews. Hopefully it won't be nothing too serious here. For the Watford fullback. Chelsea looking to advance to the fifth round of the competition, which is where they fell last season, late on against Everton. That late error by Lucas Bergström. They'd be so keen to put things right this season and go a little further. As I mentioned, they've been in eight of the last 11 finals and they are second in the list of all-time winners in this competition. What do you think the message would be here, Sam, from the coaching staff towards these Chelsea players? Because Watford have, have looked quite good so far in this second half. I think there's, there's, there's clear ways you can get at Watford. You know, I, I spoke about that slightly more direct approach. Uh, I think drawing the fullbacks in field and and using Brody Hughes and, and Silcott Dubri a little bit more as well. It'll be tactical stuff right now because Ed Brand will know a third goal. Essentially, I think that finishes the piece. But I'm not confident sitting here now that Watford aren't going to get another one. So I think that third goal is is crucial. And and we've seen, you know, throughout the 57 minutes, Chelsea can cut Watford open, no problem at all. The forward players are looking dangerous when they can get it into them, but. Um, they want to get it, they want to get it. You don't want a grandstand finish, you don't want the Watford staff to be able to affect the piece by bringing on substitutes who will be very keen, disappointed to not have started the game. I know how those young guys will be feeling, they'll be highly motivated to get on and make a name for themselves and make a story for Watford. So, all to play for right now. I didn't envisage after the first 20 minutes or so it being this tight, so you have to credit the home side. It's a very good. Very good watchable cup tie here. Here's Soon Sup Bell, who will have to settle for the throw. Chelsea have a challenge here, no doubt about that. Is it a challenge that they will overcome? They're on the attack once more. Clip forwards and Arthur Marriott comes off his line to collect. You get the sense that these Watford players are showing a bit more belief, as Sam suggested, that they can do something here tonight. Ball 
will send forwards. Danger here for Chelsea. Real danger, in fact, the strike comes in from Adrian Blake. And Watford reveling in this situation here. Why not? They were 2-0 down. They were perhaps a long way out of this game. They got a gift to get back in it, and they could be looking to draw themselves level here. Deflected behind. Another chance comes. This time it was Kyrie Lisby. Well, you can see that they're absolutely delighted that they made the block, but... I think there's a bit of disappointment in there from Chelsea that Watford are so in this game. I think Lisby can strike there, can't he, on his left foot. Once he turns on the half turn, I think he can get that strike away a little bit sooner. In the end, Badly Morgan able to make a, a very important block for, for Chelsea. And I wouldn't say they're rocking, but Watford looking dangerous coming forward. Belief building here. More Watford as the ball's clipped into the area and Adekoke got stuck underneath that a touch. That looked really dangerous for a moment there. It will be another Watford corner, but that's a let-off for Chelsea. He just didn't look to, to move his feet back towards the far post. Took off a bit early, if you like, and I was surprised actually to see him make, make the, the, the touch and turn it aside. Deep ball once more. We've seen this quite often from Watford. And Lisby is the player there. Goalkeeper always going to be favourite. Slightly unorthodox, but gets the job done. Chelsea just having some nervy moments here. Another deep delivery with the corner. Ford manages to get there first. And down for Chelsea. We're going to have the game stopped again. Might not do Chelsea too much harm here, Sam. They might just get a chance to have a bit of a breather and have a bit of a chat amongst themselves because Watford are starting to perhaps get on top a little in this game. Yeah, and it's you know, it's not a situation that they'd have been in you know, too often, I wouldn't say. You know, you know, the magnitude of the evening, big games, playing at the first team, they're playing in the first team environment, you know, supporters through the door, the families will be there. And um, they're coming under pressure now. And I think the build up to the game. I don't know, just the environment sometimes. You put a lot into these games, and there's an example there. Dubry, still got Dubry getting cramped you know, very early in this second half, and just an example of that, I mean, how big these games are and how the tension's flowing through the, the bodies of these young men. And I guess something else that Chelsea have to deal with is they're seen as a scalp. Everybody wants to beat this Chelsea team. They've had prolonged success in this competition. They are the team to beat, and they have to deal with that. Yeah, they played some good stuff, Watford. You know, I don't want to do, do them a disservice, but balls are going to start to be put underneath the goalkeeper's crossbar. They're going to be put under pressure from free kicks, set pieces. May start going a little bit longer as the game wears on. And you know, invariably, you know, in academy football, you, you won't be put under that pressure too often. Good challenge this for Chelsea and Watford. The bit between their teeth right now, and they're continuing to win set pieces. Another one here for them. Chelsea are going to have to display some metal, show some resilience here to perhaps ride this out. Well, we saw in the first half, you know, Manning's got good quality with his left foot. Hall forced Adagoke into a save. He's just been over there having a, a quiet word with the set piece taker. He's shown he's got the ability to, to deliver wicked balls from in the final third and Chelsea just won't want to give too many of these away because if you give enough away Watford will get an opportunity and they find one of those deliveries again here instead it's worked short flatter delivery in towards the front post there was a vital block on that there but the ball played back in headed goalwards easy for Adagoke distribution not great hunger shown by Ryan Andrews here who just well, he got himself into a good position, but when he couldn't find the ball into the box, he'd be hugely disappointed. Well, I think we've just seen a brilliant bit of defending from Badly Morgan. I, I felt the ball fed in from the left-hand side. This is very dangerous once it misses the people at the near post. And I don't even know how much of that he sees, because Hall's in his, in his way, Badly Morgan. He improvises and, uh, and reads that ever so well. It's been a real challenge for Chelsea since half-time. Looking too good here, I don't think, for Andrews. He's been down once already tonight. He needs some more treatment as well. well. 
I always think that the dimensions of the first team ground can't be too different to the training grounds, etc. But these occasions always seem to take so much out of the young players. You know, thinking back to games of mine in the Youth Cup, you know, <laughs> players going down with cramp, you know, quite early in, in, in the second half. It, it must be a combination of that and, and the emotion that goes into it, I suppose. Big nights. Is it the condition of the pitches as well, softer pitches? Does that take a little bit more out of you? Or Possibly. is it you're working harder because it's such a big occasion? That yeah, and the, yeah the, 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 the tension, probably. Um, how much you put in. Yeah. It all um, you know, affects everyone. We've had a couple of players down very early in this second half, haven't we? You normally uh, expect players to start going down in the last 10 minutes. But it is, it's the competition you want to win, isn't it, the FA Youth Cup? As you said earlier, it's when you're at that level, when you're, you're in the academy teams, these are the occasions that you look forward to. You take on big teams, you play in first-team stadiums, and you know people are watching as well. Yeah, and, you know, the latter stage has always, you know, been very well covered. You think of um, the, 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 the games of Manchester United, the 90s, Beckham's and, and Neville's gigs, people like that, that played in the competition, even going back further. I think, you know, the Busby Babes or whatever, the... The Manchester United team of the 60s was very successful in the, the youth side, obviously, in this competition. And the Chelsea team of, of more recent times have had a, a sensational record in this competition. So it's always been very prestigious, you know, irrelevant of what's happened to the FA Cup, actually. The FA Youth Cup, uh, FA youth Cup has, has remained the number one tournament uh, for, for, for the young academy players. And you, you probably can't say that the FA Cup has got the same pool, maybe, as it had one day, but this one for the youngsters it's um, definitely the number one the one they want to win it does of course get national television coverage the deeper that you go in the tournament as well and Chelsea well, they've had some remarkable games late on haven't they in these tournaments in recent years that incredible 7-6 aggregate victory over Fulham back in 2014 when they scored three times in the final 11 minutes to turn that one around, including the stoppage time winner from Dominic Solanke. Three successive wins against Manchester City in the final, and that thumping of Arsenal. 7 1 on aggregate in 2018. Two players down here, Shakai Ford and Lewis Hall. I think he just loses his footing, maybe, Ford. Ball's just making its way to Lewis Hall, just going to help it away from the danger area. Yeah, he just treads on him, I think, but. It's not malicious, just loses his footing. And just touching back on that point of the allure of this competition, the Chelsea players, they want to play at Stamford Bridge in front of some Chelsea supporters as well. They'd have seen the players that have gone before them do the same. I can think of finals of the past, not necessarily just involving Chelsea, but other teams as well. And they've, they've packed stadiums out for the finals. I remember that West Ham side that had the likes of Cole and Carrick that came through. There was... 25,000 in there that night to watch that live on national TV. It's a huge window, a huge showcase for these players. Yeah, not many of them have probably experienced it to, the, to this point. Lewis Hall, of course, had a great um, opportunity last week. But and Here is Lewis Hall looking to make it three, pushed around the post, not too cleanly, but Anthony Marriott got the job done there. Corner to Chelsea. Yeah, well, if that's cut back from the other side on his left foot, that's probably a truer strike, but he just doesn't catch it at all. And I think, look at the space he's got there, he could have allowed that to run across him onto his left side, said it himself, would have had a much better opportunity of short, uh, scoring. So just a little bit rash, maybe. Just beyond the midway point in this second half. It's been a bit of a stop-start second half with a succession of players going down. It's that ball into the front post. It's kept alive at the back. What an opportunity there for Chelsea. Chelsea just start to click back into gear, perhaps start to create a few more opportunities. Watford have been in the ascendancy for the last 10 or 15 minutes. Can Chelsea now begin to turn that tide? Badly Morgan. So got to be interesting to see if Brand looks to start making some changes. Perhaps it looks as if there is a bit of action over on the far side. So Chelsea perhaps close to making a change. That. Morgan again. That was done by Webster, who's displayed some nice touches tonight at the base of that Chelsea midfield. Very 
Evans again. A little bit tight here for Chelsea as they look to play a way out. Forced to go long. Dubry, but it works out here for Watford who might have a chance to get themselves level here and it is a chance which isn't taken by Adrian Blake real opportunity there and Chelsea a touch lucky perhaps well Ford finds himself in a lovely bit of space and that is nearly as good as what Mothersill provided in the first half it's a lovely pass I've got to say they get cut open far too easily but all the credit in the world to Gilchrist getting across and Making the challenge. Brody Hughes had given that up. He thinks that's a certain goal. Shouldn't be giving it up, but credit Gilchrist for making a brilliant challenge. In comes the corner towards the front post. And so Belt heads it away. All credit there to the Chelsea captain. Michael Gilchrist fearing the worst and mopping up for his side and preventing Watford from drawing level. Charged down by Mothersill. Into the final 20 minutes here at Vicarage Road and plenty of work to do for Chelsea and plenty of hope for the Hornets as well. And given a very good second half performance here. A change coming for Chelsea and it will be Leo Castledine who will come on. Who provides plenty. He's been in good goal scoring form as well. Four goals in his last six games and it will be Jude Soonsup Belt who will make way. It's a play that you like I think isn't he Sam? Leo Castledine. Yeah he's got he makes things happen. He's got a brilliant work ethic, um, can link the play intelligently. I'd imagine he'll go into one of the withdrawn positions and Mother Seal will go into June, uh, June to Top Bell's role as the, the number nine. So, little change, but shouldn't disrupt Chelsea too much. Yeah, it, it's all about attitude, I, I would say, with Leo Castle dying, combined with, with good quality. But his work ethic, his, uh, his um, tenacity is, is what really stands out and, and good for a goal as well. So, that. You know, threat from the forward trio shouldn't diminish with his arrival. Yeah, he'll be desperate. He'll certainly be looking to get an FA Cup, FA Youth Cup goal here tonight because he had a fair few goes in the game against Leighton Orient, didn't he? He had some good opportunities that he couldn't quite take in the second half of that contest as Chelsea look to wrap things up. It's Watford who are looking to get themselves to 2 2 here. Watford who are currently in eighth position in the under-18 Development League in the southern section. And one place off bottom as well, it has to be said, and they were beaten 6-0 by Cholton in their last game, but they have shown us plenty here tonight. And the valve doesn't look particularly happy. Beauty of cup competition, Sam, you never know. They come in as overwhelming favourites, which I think it's fair to say Chelsea probably were here tonight, but Watford, well, they had... The door opened up for them with Chelsea looking in control and the confident side here in this second half. What can they create here? Chelsea with everybody back. Jumped into the area. Ford turns into trouble. And they can Chelsea break from a Watford set piece once more? It just gets away. And Mother Silk. It's a chance, wasn't it? I think if Harvey Vale's pass goes into the space rather than into Mother Seal's feet, Chelsea got a much better opportunity of creating something there. Unfortunately, Mother Seal just couldn't react in time to take it under his spell. Perhaps there will be a few opportunities for Chelsea to strike like that as the game wears on, because Watford will naturally have to show a bit more adventure at some stage the longer that they trail. Concern for them here that Eddie Manning is down. He's Someone has said had a really good evening and shown some really nice touches. Just taking on one of those hydration sachets. And managing to just about find the touchline with the empties as well. He's standing over this free kick. So pick out up to the toes of Ryan Andrews into the area. And a Watford opportunity here, perhaps rolled across goal and it's fired in. Adrian Blake who had that opportunity a few moments ago, draws Watford level here. From 2-0 down to 2-2, and who knows where this cup tie is going to go next.
Brilliant goal, you have to say, and it's been such an even contest the last 10, 15 minutes. Andrews' pass is an absolute delight. And then Greaves, we saw him make that run in the first half when he got his shot away. Presence of mind to drag that back is excellent. It's a brilliantly worked goal. He recognises he can't shoot from that position, drags it back perfectly for Blake, and it gets the finish it deserves. The two passes, excellent. And Blake dispatches it on the far post. Now this game has changed. Chelsea were two goals in front after 22 minutes, but now Watford back level here. And again, the tie right back in the balance. Watford have been really good in this second half. You have to give them immense credit for the way that they've gone about their business. They've had several opportunities and now they've put one away. And who knows where this game is going. They have the wind in their sails, they are in the ascendancy. Chelsea now just need to gather themselves. They're trying to work a way to get back on top here. But you can see the Watford plays, they really believe, and it's got the crowd inside Vicarage Road going as well. Plenty for Chelsea to deal with here as Watford come forwards again. Lisby. Working hard, but just a touch too hard. The assistant wasn't going to miss that right in front of them. What did Chelsea need to try and do here, Sam, to try and get a grip back on this game? They need to compose themselves. They need to not take any risks in the defensive third. And to get it forward to the, to the front players and hope that that final ball improves, because the situations are still arising for them to hurt Watford. It's just... Picking the right final ball with a, a bit of composure in the in the, uh, the final third. Hopefully, Castle Dine, that was his first involvement there. Good play from him. Hopefully, he can hit the ground running. Composure needs to be brought to the party because the momentum is with the home side. And you have to credit them enormously because they didn't look like a good side in the first period. They looked like they were you know, inferior to this Chelsea side. You can't tell the difference in quality now. It's a very even game. They clearly believe that they can complete a comeback here, Watford. And go from 2 0 down to 3 2 up. Chelsea can prey upon that confidence and that eagerness to go and win it from Watford as they look to break here themselves. Hughes. Now Hall. Real chance for Harvey Vale. He's already got one tonight. He's dancing his way through, denied by the post. And perhaps moments like that make you think that something might be happening here tonight for Watford. It was a lovely pass, Lewis Hall, into Harvey Vale. He's found himself in a nice bit of space, and he's always looking to manufacture onto that left side. Like they've just done enough. I think the Watford player got a toe on the ball, but he was able to steer it still towards the far corner. So Cox over his ball, it'll break at the back post. Another chance coming here for Chelsea, and it's a good save by Alfie Marriott. Well, what we say in the Senior FA Cup, if you're going to pull off a, a surprise, you quite often need your goalkeeper to have a game, and Alfie Marriott has kept it level there for Watford. Yeah, Brody Hughes just maybe not able to find the corner. This was a lovely pass from Lewis Hall, fed into the feet of Harvey Vale, always looking up to open up the goal on his left side. So unlucky to see that cannon back off the post. And Chelsea responding well. Still got Dubry down the left-hand side. Brody Hughes trying to make amends really for that chance he missed in the first half. It was a good save, Marriott. Strong right arm, but one you'd expect him to save because the angle of the shot isn't going towards either corner. A couple of chances there in quick succession for Chelsea as they look, look to get themselves back ahead. Another pause here as players make their way to their respective dugouts. What an entertaining game this has been here this evening. Chelsea into that two-goal lead relatively quickly as well. And Watford a bit back and immense credit is due for that. They've been superb, particularly since half-time. Who knows which way this game will go next.
here and perhaps getting to the stage where the fifth goal would win the contest. Which way will it go? In the second half that you can't take your eyes off here. his pass a touch but Chelsea are able to sweep it out to the far side they've got plenty of players forwards here as well Castle Dine could have rolled it to Silcott Dubry he's going to roll it to the right instead and he finds Hughes just over hits it perhaps now Webster to advance here, he's going to have a go. I think that's all there to travel, Marriott. Yeah, too hasty to get the strike away. They've got good numbers forward. Charlie Webster just needs to spread the play to this left hand side. Bodies making their way into the box. It's too early to be taking that one from that distance on his weaker left side. Having to dig it out as well. He's under his feet. A real challenge for Chelsea this. So much history, so much pedigree in this competition. Watford looking to pull off a surprise here tonight. And the more this game's wore on, the more perhaps they believe that they're able to do so. But it's been a brilliant comeback from them. Huge credit to these young Watford players. Can they go one step further and take the lead for the first time tonight? So minutes, then we will go to extra time. I don't think we were thinking that when Chelsea took that early two goal lead. I've seen plenty of players struggling with issues like cramp in this game, so extra time certainly won't be doing them any favours. Regained their composure somewhat. The Chelsea players started to make one or two chances. They just need to, to, to settle down. Uh, the sting's gone out of Watford's play, but you can't say they don't deserve to be level. They've had a really good second period. Big contrast from what they served up before the break. Full credit to them. So we've got Dubry. Offside flag, as you can see, up on the far side. to win this game might come in the next seven minutes because they've been the better team since half time. So forwards by Marriott. Clipped on by Yemo, whose goal of course brought Watford back into this game just before half time. Gift of a goal after that error by the unfortunate Prince Adagoke. to make life difficult and he's won Watford a corner as well good pressure by him on Luke Badley Morgan and now a chance for Watford and we've seen what they can do in these kind of scenarios Jennifer Gilchrist calling for concentration calling for resilience from his Chelsea teammates
Look crowded in front of Adagoke, looking to make life difficult for the keeper. There's a deep delivery, Adagoke gets a hand to it, he kind of pushes it down, but manages to get it away as well. Making it difficult for him though, aren't they, Sam, in that six-yard box, really crowding the area around him. Yeah, they, they were um, well represented at the far post. He did ever so well. Slung towards that far stick again. Some questions of the goalkeeper and he stood up to the challenge. It's a challenge that he has to face once more because Watford have themselves another corner, this time over on the far side. Less than five to play now. Someone's got to take it. Discussion taking place with Blake and with Manning. And again, we see plenty of attention in the area around. And Agoke comes in. It was a dangerous delivery as well. Headed by Hughes. And Webster momentarily the furthest forward for Chelsea. Now Harvey Vale. This be looked to make the challenge. Vale. Proceeds with the ball, it's still Vale, rolls it to Webster who likes to dig an effort out. It was just lacking a touch of quality and control there in the penalty area for Chelsea. Yeah, it's a shame, it's another chance for that man. Lovely play from, from Castledine, setting off Harvey Vale, and at this stage of the game just showing his, his fitness, driving towards Watford and Webster should do much better. In his defence, the ball slightly behind him, if that's the case, take another touch. Make sure you steer that drive goalwards. On by Ford. Bouncing and bobbling around in the middle of midfield. Poor challenge by Webster. He knew that Manning had got the better of him there. if he may well have his name taken as well and I don't think he can have too many complaints really he knew what he was doing there he wasn't going to allow Manning to go any further first yellow card of the game comes in the 88th minute Chelsea were knocked out late on last season in that game against Everton in the fifth round. Taken quickly and works short. Andrews ball towards the far post, hanging high. It gives Adagoke a long time to look at it. And the keeper claims as well. The forward isn't going to let him get the ball away quickly. Morgan can one of these teams create an opportunity in the time that remains here's Lisby driving Watford forwards Webster steps in and he steps in well referee allows play to continue and it falls kindly here for Greaves he rolls it left chance for Ford checks back inside can he get a strike away he can Took a touch on the way through Chelsea are really having to show some steel and dig in here as we come towards the conclusion of this contest. Yeah, just couldn't get out. Castledine wants the foul. Then Lewis Hall is a little bit slow to get to the ball. I don't know if he's just struggling a bit physically. The first bit's really nice. And forward and just can't get the strike on target on his right foot. But it is Watford who are knocking on the door. Just waiting for the ball to be received, uh, retrieved from the stand behind the goal. You can see there's too many people in it and it didn't seem like too many people were willing to go and find it either so we've got a new ball it's been knocked on from the dugout area as we tick now into the final minute will there be some late drama here in the 90 or are we about to go through two extra time
Again, they opt to go deep. Again, it's a testing delivery and it's headed away. Just in front of the line. Watford was so, so close there. Manning again gets to it first. Lisby. Looking to get the better of Castledine. It's a brilliant piece of play. Now Manning. He shifts it looking for Ford. The challenge comes in. Chelsea just can't get out here. Four minutes to be added on. A minimum of four minutes to be added on. And Chelsea are perhaps hanging on here, Sam. They are. That was, you know, real clever thinking from Brody Hughes, I think it was, getting back on the far post. They've tried this corner time and time again. This time Hall makes a meaningful header from the end of Manning's cross. But Brody Hughes, good quick thinking to bail out his goalkeeper. Different foul on Lewis Hall just as Chelsea tried to counter-attack. It's... It is anyone's game. It's been really in the balance last 20 minutes. Both teams causing the other problem every time they come forward. Lots of chances. And I'd be surprised if this continues into extra time should we get there. It's been such an open game. Kyrie Lisby just picking up a yellow card there as it's given away by G. And Watford have a chance to flood forwards once more. Cross comes in, it might break at the back post. It does break at the back post for Lisby. Does he have the composure to pick someone out here? The cross goes in, appeals for handball. That would have been harsh, I feel. Not the players aren't happy, but Ball did not travel particularly far there. Manning. Is Balogun now Ford given away, given away poorly, and now a chance for Sokot Dubri to push forwards, but he just gets held up. Let's take another look at this, Sam, and I think it would have been harsh had it been given. I think it may well have struck the hand, but the distance was, was so so short. Yeah, you can't give those. You, you can't give those. I mean, they'll. Some people may say it's an unnatural position. You're playing football. You're playing football. You're always off balance. You're always doing things with your body you wouldn't do. You're walking down the street. I've never really understood that term, so I don't like to see those given correct decision. And the players cramping up here. It's look as if we will be heading into extra time. Unless someone can step up here in the next couple of minutes. It's the second time we've seen Manning cramping up no surprise really he's covered plenty of ground and he's he's been very good indeed in that Watford midfield cross charge down Webster Sukot Dubri just haven't really got Mothersill into the game since he's moved into that forward position and it could be very different for them if they could they haven't at, at all it's a good point not been able to Give him anything really from wide positions or, or get it into his feet. It's, you know, the, the two tens have still have lots of the ball. Castle um, Dine since he's come on. Harvey Vell's continually been a threat on the right hand side. I mean, those two chances have come late in the game and he's come in field, but this could be the last chance now. Webster stands over this set piece. That's two. That's Lewis Hall. Can they drop in a delivery here? Presents a chance for Chelsea to go through to the fifth round at the very death. Webster, he whips it in. He's got far too underneath that real disappointment. And it very much looks now as if we're really going into extra time. Such a disappointing way to end, really. Good chance to put Watford under pressure. And just uh, is alleviated as soon as it leaves his foot, really. He can relax and, and think about the extra half an hour. See how frustrated Webster is with himself there. He knows what a good chance that was for Chelsea. They try and nick a goal right at the very end here. Marriott takes the goal kick, and there is the full-time whistle. We will play another 30 minutes here. An engaging 
cup tie it has been. Chelsea raced into a two-goal lead. Harvey Bale and Malik Mothersill putting them ahead. But Watford pulled one back just before half-time. A mistake by Prince Adagoke alone. Emmanuel Adeyemo to make it 2-1. And then Watford through Adrian Blake late in the second half. Got it back to 2-2. Both teams had chances to win it in normal time and neither could take them. And now it's a big test for them, Sam, with another 30 minutes to play. It is going to be, yeah. I mean, Chelsea need to dust themselves down because that was a good Watford performance in, in the second half. They had Chelsea rocking on occasions. There's still been plenty going forward to suggest there's going to be more chances. They've been able to cut Watford open. Harvey Vell's still looking strong. You know, if they can feed him the ball, he surely has got another opportunity in him but from the, the position Chelsea were in at 2-0 up didn't foresee see this happening at all credit to the home side they definitely deserve their extra half an hour to try and make themselves um, heroes well let's take a look at the way that Chelsea got themselves into that two goal lead and then the way in which Watford fought back Chelsea with a brighter team early on no doubting that lovely ball through there Sam by Mothersill and Harvey Verwell that's why he's gone on and played some first team football for Chelsea it was very easy wasn't it two passes gee look at the space Mothersill's afforded but the pass really admired that great quality Harvey Vale showing all that um, coolness in front of goal, making sure that he took it with a stronger left side and scoring comfortably. Perfect start for Chelsea, just nine minutes on the clock when they took that one goal lead, and it wasn't too much longer before they made it to Watford committing incredibly nearly every player forwards there at their own corner, leaving them exposed, and then a multitude of errors finally leading to Mothersill making it two. Yeah, well, at this stage, you're thinking, how many are Chelsea going to score, realistically? because Watford in disarray for a 10-15 minute period and this was the product of it. The goalkeeper, I think he's in a difficult position, but Balogun, he probably should have done better at the other end of the pitch and it was just a bit of a mess really. Chelsea coasting at 2-0 and closing in on half-time and then all of a sudden the game changed. That slip, that mistake from Prince Adegoke, capitalised upon by Emmanuel Adeyemo and it was the moment in which the match changed. Yeah, it must have given the Watford players such a huge boost because at that stage, Chelsea were very comfortable going into half-time. Watford have had you know, two chances maybe on Chelsea's goal, but in the main, in general play, Chelsea had coasted. So that just completely changes the dynamic and the mindset. And Watford came out a different side after the break. Adrian Blake, well, he'd already passed up one opportunity to draw his side level just moments before this as well, but a great pullback by Jack Reeves. And this time, Blake wasn't going to miss his mark. Watford back level in the game. Terrific composure, I felt, from Andrews and then Greaves. Lots of pace on the delivery, which meant that well, could really be thumped towards the target, and he, he finished it beautifully, right? The joyous scenes for Watford, who looked in all reality out of this game when they were trailing 2-0. Very little for them to clutch hold of at that particular point, but they fought their way back. And Chelsea have got to get themselves going here tonight. We wonder, Sam, perhaps just how much fatigue will play a part here. We can see plenty of the Chelsea players doing those stretches, trying to loosen those calf muscles up. We saw players from both teams struggling in that second half. They'll be tired. The, the whole occasion, decent crowd in, uh, the lead up to these games. They know, you know how big it is for the, for the football club and you know, how much the, the hierarchy within the academy want them to win and, and progress because I think that's the, the, the mark of... Yeah, the, the strongest group of young players uh, in, the, in the country, if you like. So I think there's that pressure from within. And um, yeah, it will certainly be a challenge in half an hour now because they've put an awful lot into that game, awful lot into that 90 minutes. And psychologically, big test for the Chelsea players as well to be pegged back after being in such a commanding position. So it's really interesting to see how they, they conduct themselves and how they perform in this extra half an hour. Test now physicality and mentality as we ride into another 30 minutes here the two captains will hall and alfie gilchrist just in discussion with the referee ahead of this extra period challenge that chelsea perhaps were not expecting here tonight if they come through it it'll be a good lesson for them Watford with a spring in their step Will this game go next? Don't 
Matthew Blake, who brought Watford level with that equaliser. He's going to get this first period of extra time underway. Just waiting for the final thumbs up to come. False start there, a bit of a strange one, so we'll have to go again. So 2-2 two -two as we tick into extra time in the fourth round of the FA Youth Cup. Oh, the team to know what they want to do from here. And it goes back to Marriott and it's launched long. What a win this would be for Watford. They've shown us plenty here tonight. And Balogun just flicks it away. Retrieved by Harvey Vale. He's looking to turn inside onto that left foot once more. He clips it up towards the far post, seeking Castledine. A chance for Watford to break once more. Here's Ford. He got more and more into the game as that second half wore on. by Gilchrist. Vail again, room to run into as well. He's got Mothersill to his right, he's got Castledine to his left. Might just open up for himself here, he can't though. Get himself past Ryan Andrews who produces a strong challenge to close that door. It's a shame for Harvey Vail, just overdid it. A tad, had options in front of him. Certainly, uh, Castle Dine and, and Mothersill were up in support, but I think he's playing with great confidence. You, you can see that he feels that he's the one that can turn this game in Chelsea's favour. He still looks to be moving relatively well, re relatively freely, looks full of running. I wouldn't be surprised if he's the one who, who gets the all-important goal. Of course, if we can't find a winner in extra time, then we will go to penalties. A chance for Marriott or Prince Adagoke to be the hero here tonight. Throw in to Watford. Substitution for the going to make a change here. Jack Reeves who laid on that second goal, that equalising goal for them. And his evening is done. He's going to be replaced here. Smith, the player who will come on in his place. I wouldn't be too surprised to see both teams dip into their bench as much as they're allowed to do so here because we have seen some players looking fatigued as this night has wore on. Of course, the one prospect we perhaps have some is that as those legs continue to tire. The pitch perhaps just opens up and we get a more open game as players struggle to get themselves through 120 minutes. He played forwards, Gilchrist. In a tight corner there and he will have to settle for the throw. It's going to have a go, he crashes it goalwards. Chance here, perhaps. Have the final touch, the decision is a Watford corner. The chances and the threat remain from the home side. It's really good stuff, Luke Bradley Morgan, in, in the end. A good situation for, for, for Watford. But Bradley Morgan able to repel the danger. Those corner kicks have proved problematic from the first minute, really. I think back prior to Chelsea, got the opening goal. A couple of balls slung in from the right-hand side. Abba got his head in the couple, didn't he, in the, in the first period. And Manning maybe not as influential as the second half wore on, but definitely showing his quality from these situations. Everybody protecting the back post right now for Chelsea, where plenty of these set pieces have dropped so far tonight. Mothersill just dropping into that six-yard area. What will Watford try here? 
and it's high, again it's towards the back post. He's unable to get his head on it this time, George Abbott. Just for a moment, Brody Hughes, you could hear his frustration. He thought he was away. He knows how close he was to being away. But again, Watford going for that deep delivery. They clearly identified something there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not as if there's a huge overload there, but one of the centre-halves peeling around the far post. Manning has hit the back of the six-yard box time and time again. There was one or two problems. Interesting scene, you know, Watford not in any hurry, really. Don't know if that's... Um, Tactical advice, maybe from the um, from the coach, just to slow things down. It certainly seemed the case, didn't it? After it went to two-two, you feel like the other ones with, with the momentum. They're on the front foot. Chelsea were rocking a little bit, but they seem quite content to take it to extra time. Um, and you understand, you know, you're playing against a club with you know, bigger resources and, and probably better calibre players. You know, a number of internationals in this Chelsea lineup, or well, little of internationals. So. Still going to be very much a success for the underdog if um, Watford had to make it through. A change here for Chelsea, a freshening up. Zane Silcott Dubri, the player who makes way, and Shudo Mendel, the player who comes on. Yeah, got good ability, this, this lad. Very creative force for the uh, under 18s, and a bit of a purple patch early part of the season, so they'll be looking to him to. Just get them back, get them back going a little bit, a bit more creativity, and also just to polish up that final ball. They've got into some great situations, but it's picking the right ball. And he invariably does that. A young player in this age group, and he has four goals in four games this season. And Marriott there just called into action to spin out of his penalty area quickly. John Webster. Chelsea preparing another change. It seems that the back of the dugout just see someone getting ready to come on the board in action as well at the mouth of the tunnel. So it seems Ed Brand is perhaps going to continue to fix things up. Perhaps here over on the far side, just run out of room. Enterprising play. Just run out of space to make something happen there, Leo Castledine. Is it a case of concentration as much as anything now as well, Sam? Mental fatigue that's kicking in. If someone switches off, it could prove costly, perhaps. Yeah, defensively, I always felt, you know, for the forward players, Gives you a bit more license, I think, in extra time when there's tired bodies. Maybe when you know, people are not expecting you to take that extra touch or that extra risk at going beyond someone. I thought it'd give you that bit of freedom. Here we go. Shooter Mendel, they do it, looking to make a real impact here for Chelsea. He's only just come off the bench and he strikes the crossbar. It was a glorious opportunity. It really opened up for him and it really looked as if he was going to put Chelsea back into the lead. Yeah, it's a great position that he finds himself in. He's got the option of going square. Mendel Adowu robs Abbott brilliantly. And then can he feed it across? I think he picks the right option, although there's a set on for Hughes there. He's disappointed he doesn't get the ball rolled to him. But I think once you get into this position, he did have a little look. I think he sees him, but opts to take the strike on. Just clips the top of the crossbar, but he's a game changer. Got a lot of attacking threats on there now as Chelsea chase the winning goal and something that we just touched upon as well tired legs for defenders he's not looking tired he's fresh he's ready to go he wants to take his chance and he could be a real problem for Watford for the remainder of this game another player cramping up is perhaps going to be a problem that we're going to see throughout this extra period stretches and hydration sachets being taken the Watford players also Taking on some hydration over on that far side. Real test for these players, as we've mentioned, the 
occasion itself and everything that comes with it. But they also don't play too many games that go beyond 90 minutes as well. So a real test of character here. And we can see a lot of the players really are feeling it as we tick towards the 100th minute. And Watford now going to make a change as well. These players going to come off the bench and be the hero here tonight. Or are we destined for a game to be settled from the penalty spot? Balogun unable to continue his race run here this evening. Christos Batzelis. The player who comes on in his place. Blake. Confidence soaring after scoring that equaliser. Still Blake. Andrews clips it into the box. And Hughes deals with the situation very well indeed. He does. He's continued to uh, raid up and down the right hand side. Harvey Vale's the, the left wing back now. Somewhat surprisingly, maybe. He looked like he was the one looking most likely of getting Chelsea a goal, but still a formidable front three. Castle Dine, Mendel Adowu supporting Mother Seal. So. All the attacking players out there, Chelsea aren't settling for penalties, they're going to win this game. Lisby. Hopster sticking with him over on the far side. Hopford with a couple of players inside the Chelsea penalty area. Ball rolled back here to Manning. He's about Zellis, the substitute, recently on for Hamzat Balogun. If you are just joining us, maybe you've heard there's been a bit of action going on here at Vicarage Road tonight, just to make sure you're aware. That clock indicating that we are 12 minutes into the first period of extra time here. It's been a thrilling evening as well. Chelsea went into a two-goal lead. Goals from Harvey Vale and Malik Mothersill, but they've been paid back. Great run forward. Really good run forward and a look towards the referee there as Mendel Adowu, who's proving problematic here for Watford, goes down. Great burst of pace and he's asking the question here. Well, there's not... Mendel Adowu's produced an unbelievable bit of skill there. The first view in, I thought he went down a bit easily, but Hall doesn't seem to... Well, Hall looks a little bit nervous, to be honest. He raises his arms in the air. He's not remonstrating with a player. We'll get a better idea now. There's definitely a movement towards the ball from the centre-half. He looks guilty, doesn't he? And you can tell from the reaction of the Chelsea player, he feels that's a definite penalty. I think it's a penalty. I think you can tell from the reaction of the Watford player that he is very, very relieved. The reaction always tells you, doesn't it? You can tell from the way that the player reacts who's committed the challenge. They perhaps get a bit better at hiding it the older that they get, but obviously at such a young age, you have to say, as if Chelsea had a real case in point there for a penalty, but not to be. I mean, it's, it's, it's a t difficult angle to tell from, but the second time, closer in, a little bit slowed down. Looks to me as if there was a definite movement towards the ball. Again, I, you'd expect your centre-half there, I don't want to see it, but to make a move towards the, the attacker and tell him in no uncertain terms, don't try and cheat the referee, there was none of that. It looked like relief to me. We remain at 2-2. Castledine. Still Castledine here. Hopford getting players back, but Chelsea with four inside the penalty area. Webster. And Chelsea chisel out a chance here at the end of the first period of extra time. 
G. Into the dough with really made an impact since coming on. Watford have to work out a way to deal with his running power and his very close control as well. Ball into the area, chance here for Castledine, who turns inside, and he finds a yellow wall in the way, but that wall will not keep it out. Harvey Vale with his second of the night. Chelsea back in front just before half-time in extra time. Well, they deserve it because it's been a brilliant reaction in extra time. They've been the better side, they've been forcing the issue, and the substitutes, the ones that are fresher, making a difference. It's built on the left-hand side, Vale, I love this from Castle Dine. Chops inside the defender, should score, and then Harvey Vale, he's got no right to put that away from there. It's a brilliantly composed and executed finish through the eye of a needle, really. Lovely play from Castle Dine, and that's brilliant at this stage of the game. That is easy to miss horribly. He finds the, the route to goal and deserves it for his performance. Deserves his second goal, he's been excellent. Very easy to slash at that as well, isn't it? And not show the composure that he did. Yeah, I mean, tired legs. You, you'd expect someone to just, on the half volley as well, just spank that and it can go absolutely everywhere. But to, to have the trust in that lovely left foot, guide it in, side-footed, get the pace on it. A really nice finish. It was just a fraction of him as well that was already running away to celebrate as well. He knew he'd seen in his mind there what was going to happen and it was the perfect execution. And Chelsea back ahead here in what has been a very testing tie for them. But just before that, there was this penalty appeal as Ndladowu went down. Another look at it, Sam. What are you thinking? Well, the skill's magnificent to evade the challenges of, of three Watford players. <laughs> It's very difficult. Does he leave his leg in a touch? There's probably a bit of contact as well. So, yeah, it's something I'm sure they would have been talking about afterwards had they not just gone and got that third goal. It's very close. Difficult to... I think it's one that would divide opinion, wouldn't it? You get 50% saying that's a definite penalty and 50% in disagreement. It gives me the chance to trot out the old line as well about just how difficult it is for the officials as well. We've seen that now, three or four angles. As you say, you can see why it would be given, and you can see perhaps why it wasn't given. But Chelsea back in front here, and they will be hoping very much that that won't be a talking point. Once all is said and done here, as they're looking for a fourth goal here. Here's Hughes, still Hughes. Mendler Dowu, he's making a real difference, isn't it? Back in possession once more, he clips it up towards the back post, the head of goalwards. Again, Marriott had a long time to watch it drop. He gathers it in. There is the half-time whistle here in extra time. And you can see the frustrations of the Watford keeper as he belts the ball away because Chelsea have got their noses back in front. That's been really impressive. Um, not so much the fitness. I just think the, the extra quality is starting to come out now. But that comes with clear heads as well. So you, I've got to admire the mentality of the players because they must have been rocked in that second half. Smiles are back on faces, a fourth goal, absolutely finishes this, but it's going to take something remarkable from Watford to, to go again, I would say. I certainly shouldn't discount them just yet because they have managed to fight their way back into this game once, but this, as Sam says, makes it really difficult for them now. This Harvey Vale goal, so much to admire Sam in the way that he puts this one into the back of the net. Well, he looks so fresh. The pass into Castledine is fantastic at this stage of the game, really punched through Watford players into a nice bit of space where Castledine finds himself and then he shows the composure, should score, but Harvey Vale, yeah, you, you said it, it's easy to, to make a complete mess of that, but he finishes it superbly. Great technical ability shown there by Harvey Vale, the man who put Chelsea ahead here after nine minutes. It's been a thrilling cup tie. Again, if you are just joining us, Chelsea... We're pretty much coasting early on in this game. They raced into a two-goal lead, but Watford got themselves back into the game just before half-time and managed to force an equaliser in the second half as well. They had their chances to win it, as did Chelsea in the 90, but Chelsea have just stepped it up a gear. As that first half of extra time wore on and Harvey Bell getting his second of the night, which has Chelsea back ahead here. Can those young Watford players find a way back? A few of them are looking exhausted here. Perhaps not the body language that suggests that they feel that they can mount a comeback. A few aches and pains and cramps kicking in as well. 
They're really going to have to dig deep here, Sam, if they are to find a way back level for a second time tonight. Yeah, that, that's a bitter blow. You can see the Chelsea players pretty elated. They just need to get a handle on that and make sure they continue in the same vein that they've shown in that 15 minutes where they've been excellent. They, they, they really have to step up a few gears and, and kick on. has been ever so impressive. And you know, if Watford could do likewise in the second 15 minutes, you'd have to take your, your hat off and, and, and say, well done, penalties is the, the right outcome. But at the moment, Chelsea looking much the favourites to get through. Manic Mother Silk will watch on for the final 15 minutes. Louis Flower on in his place. Chelsea, as we've said, looking fresher. They look more pumped up. They have the lead. The confidence is just creeping back into those Chelsea players, perhaps. But 15 minutes here for Watford to rouse themselves and find an equaliser once more. They've shown real spirit in the second half here tonight. And they've got plenty of talented young players. Can one of them step forwards and drag this game to a penalty shootout? Just waiting again for the thumbs up to get this second half of extra time underway. Change for Watford, unfortunately for them. Adrian Manning isn't going to be able to continue, it seems. Pivotal player for them in this game. We've liked what we've seen from him. give you confirmation of the change in a moment's time. A change for both teams before the start of this second period. Of extra time, Enoch Mwonge, the player who's come on in Manning's place. So can Chelsea see this one through? Liverpool or Burnley awaiting in the fifth round away from home. It would have been a tie that Chelsea came into tonight, expecting to progress, but Watford have shown them take nothing for granted. Curled down the line by Harvey Vale. Now Flower, first involvement for him. Or was it to Mendel Adowu? Chelsea have really been able to flex their strength off the bench here tonight, but it's all just opened up here. And Ford looks it out to the left, he was hoping to find. And Yemo, it gets away from Adagoke, who looks as if he's hurt himself here. The ball just got away from the Chelsea keeper. I hope that's not as bad as it looked. The Watford player just ran into the, the Chelsea goalkeeper. He's trying to actually skip over him and he's caught him in the face. That's looks like a sore one. Just in that attack there, the Watford attack. Lewis Hall looks like a bit of a passenger. I'm not sure exactly if that's cramp or something a little bit more sinister, but he certainly picked up a knock. He's not moving freely. I noticed that towards the end of normal time, I think, and he's not been too involved in extra time. So hopefully that's nothing too too concerning. You'd have thought Ed Brown would have taken him off if there was any real concern. So Maybe just tiredness in these latter stages. Oh, we've only just got back underway in this second period of extra time, but a pause in play here with the necessary checks being made to Prince Adagoke. Ted Curd is the Chelsea reserve goalkeeper on the bench tonight. Ethan Wadey, young Chelsea goalkeeper as well, was in and around the first team squad in recent days for the Carabao Cup semi final. Tie against Tottenham wasn't involved in the match day squad, but again, another example of a young Chelsea player being in and around with the first team. And they've been tested tonight, Chelsea, no doubt about that. Had to show a side to them that perhaps they haven't had to show too many times this season. There's been a lot of games in the back in the league campaign where they're doing exceptionally well, where they haven't been tested too many times they've perhaps found the going rather straightforwards but here tonight against Watford in a position of relative comfort when they were leading by two goals to nil they've really really had to fight to get themselves back ahead in this game and it's all because of Harvey Vale who we see there scorer of Chelsea's first and third goals here tonight checks continuing here for the Gokke and we can only hope that it isn't anything serious as Sam said at all because 
relative. It looked innocuous, didn't it? The, the, the forward was trying to get out of the way, but he has just caught Adagoke there. And the length of time that he's being looked at here suggests perhaps that well, he's back up on his feet. So hopefully it isn't anything too bad. But certainly, was certainly no way so can't obviously say that. Probably tiredness. He's trying to hurdle the, the goalkeeper. So maybe a little bit fatigue just didn't get him over him. Um, but yeah, looks to be in uh, some discomfort. So thankfully he's all right because they. He just can't take a chance, cannot take a chance with a, an injury like that. So I'm sure he would have come off the pitch, irrelevant of the stage of the game we're at. Of course, the protocols are much better these days to make sure that players are able to continue. Wait by Adagoke. Helped on by Castledine. And Chelsea find a fourth goal here that would... Surely seal their progress into round five. Look forwards by Hall. And Ladowu. Now Vale on a hat trick now, of course. What do you expect to see from Chelsea now, Sam, in the time that remains? Is it about trying to control possession and just trying to take as much sting out of this situation as possible? No, I think you've got to play on the front foot. Obviously, don't take too many risks in terms of the amount of bodies you flood forward, but. The four players have got the, the capability to go and secure this, I would say, in the next 10 minutes. Watford uh, have not really posed a threat in extra time. Chelsea look fresher. Harvey Vale wouldn't put it past him, completing his hat-trick. His physicality tonight is standing out for me. I mean, he's obviously a very talented footballer, but he's got the power, he's got the stamina, the pace to, to, to go with it. He looks, you know like he's a, a few years ahead of the majority of these guys and um, you know that's why he's I think really impressed everyone when he's gone over to the first team pitch can Watford find something here it's sent forwards only Ben Smith here's Lisby waiting perhaps for support to arrive still Lisby strike comes in from Ford and Webster can bring it away for Chelsea pushes it into the path of Castledine who's got Flower ahead of him. Still Castle Dine. Can't quite manage to link up there. He's got the back in possession. Good work by Adeyemo, but he'd come back from an offside position. A little under 10 minutes of extra time remaining here. If you are just joining us, just confirmation that we are in extra time. We are approaching. 21 minutes played in this additional period of the game. Ball played back to Alfie Marriott, who gets it away first time, but Chelsea now getting onto a lot of the loose balls as Watford again look to try and build another attack. Ford. Here's Blake. Andrews. Still Andrews, he looks to clip it forwards. Ford will give chase and he's got on the end of it as well. Gilchrist in the way for Chelsea. That would have been a really sloppy goal to give away. And luckily for Chelsea, their captain Alfie Gilchrist was again alert to the danger. Well, he's hardly he's hardly running uh, the fullback Andrews. He's really toiling physically, but he provides a lovely pass there. Brody Hughes just caught wrong side. Just switched off. I can't believe that's ended up in an opportunity. What would haven't looked likely, but just shows you with that just slight advantage. Still in the game. Castle Dine works it out to the right hand side. And the Ladoru, who's looked like he could make something happen, happen every time he's had possession since coming on. His effort over the top. I think Chelsea need to get the ball to him as much as they can. Yeah, the, the substitutes have made a real impact in comparison to what the, the, the Watford ones have. And, I'm surprised he goes for power there. He's got great quality in that left foot. He might just be a bit more composed and bend it. And a Harvey Vale towards the far post. Well found by Castle Dine. And um, he's got a lovely language style, isn't he? He can go either way. He's shown that already. That's um, a good few yards over the top, but he's made a real positive impact. But the youngest players within this group, he was just looking to thread it through there. Switched out to the far side. Blake. 
He's got Hughes up against him. Looks to send in the cross. Comes off Hughes. Watford have another corner. Some game this, isn't it? As soon as you think they've had the knockout blow, Watford have found something again in the last couple of minutes and posing a, a couple of questions. Huge credit. Huge credit to Tom Hart's team here tonight. Blake whips in the corner, dangerous ball, and Adagoke had to reach out and flick it away. In the corner. One of the set piece deliveries tonight. The majority of the time have been really testing for the Chelsea keeper. Again, he just gets caught in a little bit of traffic, doesn't he? And maybe he can just read the flight of that. He can step around the other side of the two, the two players, sorry. Make a more comfortable save. Always seems to be just stretching when he's dealing with these deliveries. Being put under the crossbar, calling him into action time and time again. Crowded scene at the back post. It's put in towards the centre of the goal instead. And Chelsea just about managed to get it away. Watford all of a sudden believing. It's the player in front of the goalkeeper that's posing the problem. He can't come and command because too many bodies in front of him. So the Watford captain Will Hall being replaced now. Freddie Morate. Freddie Morate, the player who's coming on here. Can he do something in the five minutes that remains? There seems to be just a bit extra again in the legs of these Watford players who know they've got five minutes to save themselves in the FA Youth Cup here tonight. Ryan Andrews weighs it up, has a go, will perhaps wish that he hadn't, but it did take a, did it take a nick on the way through. So, what for play there is just going to get the ball back as quickly as he can. And it was only going to be one of the substitutes who had the energy to go and do that. Yeah, fair, fair play to Ryan Andrews. He's, he's had a couple of good moments in the second period of extra time. He looks absolutely dead on his feet, but quite a nice pass a few moments ago and then willing to take the strike on just then so there's still life in them you'd have felt that that third goal would have really knocked the stuff in but exemplary attitude from both sides they've served up a thrill up it's been great fair and finally that's the end of Lewis Hall's night wasn't moving too too cleanly there was he as he made his way off you were saying he was struggling towards the end of the 90 I think Nick Brand has got everything out of him that he can here tonight. Time ticking down here for Watford. Should be safe on for Chelsea here. And it's Harvey Vale. Looks to clip it down the line. It's cut out by Ryan Andrews. There'll be a real respect between these two sets of players when this one's over tonight, won't they? They've really pushed each other to the edge. No, oh, they have. They have that ball from Harley, Harvey Vale. You just want that to be bigger. Just make sure it misses uh, the, the Watford fullback, even if it goes out for the goal kick. Players. You don't want them, the runners, the substitutes, the one that, ones that are fresh coming to feet. There is one of those substitutes for Watford, but Malati just doesn't quite get it right. And a bad challenge there, it seems. Referee allows play to continue. That might be the punishment to come for. Malati afterwards, Watford though, again with a chance here, strike from a long, long way out. Take a nick, I think, on its way through. And though his first mistake really he turns into traffic, all the, the spaces down the left hand side. He sees it and he, he opts the pirouette back the other way. And he's closed down by two or three Watford players and ultimately ends in more pressure for Chelsea. Unnecessary pressure brought on by the substitute. And they're going to look to make life difficult for Prince Adagoke once more. Look how crowded it is inside that penalty area. And Alfie Marriott is forward as well. Here for the Hornets, they're throwing everything they have at Chelsea. Marriott gets his head to it, but one goalkeeper denies the other. Well, we almost had a headline there, didn't we? We almost had a headline there. Watford keeping their foot on the pedal here. Mwonge. 
Webster stepping in for Chelsea. And a chance for them here to break. Flower. Might just have to go alone here. Flower takes a heavy touch. And now Marriott's back inside his own penalty area doing his job. He's breathing a bit heavily, I would suggest, after that dash. But I think that was probably an occasion where, when it hits his head, he probably thinks, I've got a chance here. But then you don't realise that Adegoke is about six foot four, well positioned and just plucks it comfortably out of the sky. But you know, sometimes you, you, you don't realise that it's going to be so comfortable for the, for the goalkeeper when it hits your head. What a night of entertainment we've had here at Vicarage Road. We're ticking down towards the final minute now of extra time. Chelsea leading 3-2. But they are holding on, but holding on and hoping to go and get a fourth. Doesn't quite work out. Just look for a moment there as if Mendel Adowu was going to be away for them. One last chance perhaps for Watford. They've got to throw everything now at Chelsea. They've thrown plenty at them all night long. Can they at least create one opportunity here to give themselves a chance? Three inside the penalty area. The cross comes in. It's headed away by Harvey Vale. You can see how hard he's blowing, how hard he's working. As we see again here, the chance, this remarkable chance for Alfie Marriott. He's, he's, he's well shackled, actually, isn't he? Bradley Morgan puts just enough pressure on him. Lisby, nice piece of play from him. Webster steps in for Chelsea. He's given Watford an opportunity here. Right at the end of this game, needlessly giving away a corner. We know who's coming forwards. Here he comes, Alfie Marriott. Came close just a minute ago. Can he have an Allison moment here as we dip into stoppage time? And there will be four more minutes still to play here. And that's got everybody going. Corner comes in. It's punched away by Adagoke. Breaks on the edge of the area. And Chelsea are a long way from being done here. Well, we had the cramps, didn't we, in the injuries, I guess, at the start of this second period. But I think yeah. everybody was caught a touch by oh. surprise there. A long night here at Vicarage Road. Yeah, how devastating for the Chelsea players. You can't let that knock you off your stride. That was great from Adagoke to come and command that situation. Then the Watford player on the D, compose yourself. You've just heard there's four minutes to go. Don't try and score the best goal in history. Get hold of it, pop it out wide, and see if you can create a better chance this time. Just waiting for that delayed offside flag to come against Mendel Adowu. Well, Watford, they're still in this. They've got plenty of time to work with still as well. Just getting a touch petty. A little bit petulant out there as the ball was kicked away. Matthew Marriott blowing hard. He's have to do four lengths of the pitch there. Goalkeepers don't often have to do that. And the Ladoe Make a difference for Chelsea since coming on. Chelsea who regained the lead in extra time through Harvey Vale. But now it's Watford who are giving everything they've got here. Players stacked up inside the penalty area. Good work by Mendel Ladoe to prevent the cross from coming in. Ball sent in, it's away by the Chelsea captain, Gilchrist. Fired back in once more, it's a brilliant ball. Maratti meets it, and he volleys it over the top. What an opportunity for the substitute, but he just lifted his effort too high. Well, that is quite simply a magnificent delivery. At this stage of the game, touch, and that, that's a pick-out, I think. Well, there's two players overloading the far post. And once it finds the substitute, Moriarty, he has got to hit the target. I think it's probably the right decision to side foot it, but yeah, once he gets there, it's a clear sight of goal. Big chance, big chance. Fabulous delivery to find him, it really was. Was that the moment? But it all ended for Watford here. Chance, it should have been rolled across, I think, to Mendel Adowu as Castledine was played through. Still work here for Chelsea to do. Lisby looking to be a menace. Offside flag goes up against Mendel Adowu as he was coming back from an offside position. Oh. 
huge credit to what we've seen from Watford here tonight. It surprises me so much to see their league position. Of course, different teams approach these youth groups, these age groups in different ways. Yellow card for Tudor and Ladowu. I'm really impressed with what I've seen from some of these Watford players tonight. Not just their ability, but their mentality as well. Yeah, they've, they've stepped up after a bit of a chase in the opening half. Could have gone under. It's been a brilliant cup tie. Sent in once more. Headed away by Hughes. Sent back where it came from. Chance it. Can he find the space to shoot? It's a vital block. Still defending to be done here. And it was Harvey Vale, of all people. Two goals tonight for Chelsea. And he was in the right place at the right time, deep inside his own penalty area to be in the way. That is a big player stepping up for his side. Oh, what a block. It's got to be hit early, though, hasn't it? It's, oh, he's got to hit it there. Does Gilchrist, all ends up, and Harvey Vale back, edge of his six-yard box. That's the old cliche, as good as a goal. That literally is. That was penalty kicks written all over it as soon as he cut inside, and Harvey Vale looks like he's going to be the hero. Certain players just have that knack of being in the right place at the right time. My word, they had to work for this tonight, Chelsea. The players of Watford are crestfallen, and rightly so, because they put so much into this game here tonight. So, so much. They found themselves down by two goals to nil. OK, looking such irritated here. At the end of this game, but Watford... Well, it was Adagoke's mistake at the end of the first half, which opened the door for them, gave them a chance in this game. It was Emmanuel Adeyemo who pulled a goal back for Watford. They then managed to make it 2-2 late in the second half. Adrian Blake scoring for them to force extra time, but Harvey Vale, who's had a fine few weeks, as an E, played for the first team in the Carabao Cup semi-final against Tottenham Hotspur. Two goals for him here tonight, bookending this Chelsea victory and then right at the end he was in the right place at the right time to make a vital block to prevent the game going to penalties your thoughts on what we've seen here tonight Sam brilliant brilliant cup tie had everything didn't it encapsulated what makes the a cup competition great an underdog taking Chelsea probably a little bit by surprise I would say in that second half the way they responded to quite a limp first half performance showed a great um, character to get themselves back into the game but then the quality showed I think ultimately for Chelsea the ability to change the game with with equally good attacking players I thought that was a, a major reason for their success kept creating chances and Harvey Vale such a strong athlete you know continues to impress me and ultimately you know he was the difference at, at both ends but brilliant cup tie enormous credit to Watford but just about the right team make it through a tough night for Chelsea, but a night in which they prevail. They come out on top after extra time here. Winners at Vicarage Road by three goals to two. So let's take a look then, Sam, at the moments that mattered here this evening, this brilliant night of entertainment. Chelsea taking the lead after nine minutes through Harvey Vale, but credit as well to Malik Mothersill for his ball through. Lovely pass, lovely pass from G. Mothersill and, and Harvey Vale. Beautifully composed finish. And Chelsea went two goals up, and we have to question the approach here by Watford, who committed so many players forwards, and Chelsea fully capitalising on the opportunity that came their way. They did. Charlie Webster sorted his feet out really quickly there to put Jude Suits up better way. Bit of good fortune the way it falls for Mothersill, but at that stage, Chelsea completely dominant. Malik Mothersill, 13 in 13 now for him, but all of a sudden Watford presented with a way back into this fourth round tie. A slip up by Adagoke, and the chance was taken by Adeyemo, and it just changed the mood of this match, didn't it? It really did. In the, in the second half, Watford were transformed. I thought this was a brilliant goal, excellently worked from Andrews, nice square pass, and the finish from Blake, who I thought was a constant threat in that second half from the left hand side. Great finish that he dispatched into the top corner. So Chelsea drawn back level and forced into extra time, but Harvey Vale stepping up to, to win the end. game. So much composure here, Sam, with the finish. Yeah, lovely composed finish in the end and, and the right man, really, to, to be the hero.
So Chelsea are through to the fifth round of the FA Youth Cup where Liverpool or Burnley will await them. A brilliant night here at Vicarage Road. Let's just mark your card for what's coming up for you on Saturday and a huge game. They don't get too much bigger than this, do they? Match day live from 11.25 on the fifth stand on Saturday as Chelsea make the trip to the Etihad. What a game that will be. As for tonight, well, Chelsea were made to work for it. They were really made to work for it. 120 minutes of entertainment here, but they came out on top from Sam Parkin and myself, Andy Bishop. It is good night as Chelsea progress through to the fifth round of the FA Youth Cup. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless uh, A sea of the aimless, I don't wanna be one of the nameless I'ma wake up with the mindset that one day I'm gonna make it And I don't think I'll be fine if I don't break my limitations Don't try to stop me I